It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee and uh, Andy are here with our preview of WWDC. Our coverage is coming up Monday, but Renee will tell us what we're going to hear about today. Uh, we'll also talk about the new uh, Apple ad, the ad for Siri with DJ Khalid and Ray Liotta. And Siri saves a life. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 510, recorded Tuesday, June 7th, 2016. This is not a place of honor. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by IT Pro TV. IT Pro TV is an easy and entertaining approach to online IT training for a free seven day trial and 30% off the life of your account. Go to itpro.tv slash MacBreak and use the code MacBreak30. And by Wealthfront. Wealthfront is a low cost automated investment service and the most sophisticated way to invest your money. Whether you've got millions or you're just starting out, visit wealthfront.com slash MacBreak and sign up to get your free personalized investment portfolio. That's wealthfront.com slash MacBreak. And by audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show where we gather weekly to talk about Apple and the latest Apple news. And this is the last show before WWDC and all the big announcements. Renee Ritchie's here from imore.com. He's pouring cold water on my parade. I'll tell you why in just a second. Also, Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun Times, not Tronk. <laughs> not Tronk. Is them, that them's the other guys? We're the bright ones. Is that going to be not yeah the new hashtag for the Sun Times? Not Tronk. Uh, exactly. We'll just put an exclamation point in front of it. We'll we'll steal all their all the yard signs and all their bus things. We'll just have people put big exclamation mark stickers. Uh, uh, people who know exactly by the Sun Times and Andy will be fine. <laughs> uh, WWDC is Monday and the reason I say you're raining on my parade Renee is because you published an article on iMore saying don't expect any hardware announcements yeah I said think software I think was the weasel words that I chose for <laughs> just in case <laughs> for pouring rain well I mean like, the, the thing is like it's really late in the cycle so I would think that if hardware was gonna was ready on time uh, we would know about it so that's and the rationale just, is we just haven't heard any leaks in other words I kind of asked about some of the stuff and they were like, uh, yeah, we wish. So, you know, some of the yeah. stuff is really interesting rumors, but it just doesn't sound like it's ready for, it's either it's not in the pipeline immediately or it's just not ready for right. WWDC. Right, right. Uh, how about uh, the Mac? It's not atypical though. I mean, there have been many years where it's been an almost completely software focused show. So while we have gotten things like iPhones in the past or new Mac Pros or new MacBooks, those are sort of bonuses. Uh, and there've been plenty of years where Apple specifically, you know, sort of let people know it's software only. Yeah. Remember the role of this event. It's when we see uh, hardware announcements. It's usually because, well, they have the they have the venue uh, already booked. They have the attention of the press. This is not something that necessarily they would book uh, five thousand people to come in for to go see. But so long as we've got, we need a place to show off the new the new MacBook. We need a new uh, place to show off the new uh, Mac Pro. So we're going to do it here. So but if we don't, don't have you, anything you don't to say, well, there's no there's yeah. no real reason. Yeah. So and in other words, there's, there's, there's WWDC no, no will be what it you, is supposed to be. And yes else nothing more yep. and there's they, i mean some they, people are really frustrated with the lack of new mac pros because for them it's as simple as shoving a skylake chip in it and throwing it out the door oh no but apple's that, going not, for something more ambitious case. with yeah. this macbook pro and that means that it's not necessarily skylake constrained but it could be oled or touch id or any of several other new features that are rolling into it constrained yeah. so but, I, that could, but that can be that can be super frustrating uh, for mac pro customers because mm -hmm. for them uh Time literally is money. That's getting uh, getting an hour job down to fifty two minutes will actually save them, make them a lot more money. So they don't they're, they're not they're not they're not uh, uh, breaking down Cupertino's door saying, please please if you have to take another year we want that <laughs> OLED strip around the side of it. Said so, no, whatever you just put take t go to the go to Best Buy. I'll even <laughs> I'll even point to the row where they have these Intel chips. I want you to buy that, put it in there, and give it to me because I want. That it, you know, you're, 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 sometimes people think yep. that uh, Apple's focusing on the wrong things, uh, but in in the end, they get to do what they want to do. 
<laughs> well, well, isn't there a little bit of a risk, though, of a backlash? I guess it's probably good, and, and probably one of the reasons you're hearing leaks that there isn't going to be anything is it's probably good to uh, calm people down a little bit because there would be a backlash if we all go there on Monday and uh, and it's just, you know, oh, okay, new iOS, we knew that. New AI, it's better new to OS ruin WMUS right now than to ruin it on Monday. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, there, there, is a, there is a lot of um, back-channel stuff that happens in the weeks leading up. Uh, sometimes I, uh, there's there's no way to uh, to prove this one way or another. I do believe that Apple tries to prime the pump one way or another uh, before the event, uh, just to make sure that if people are expecting amazing Titanic news so after Google I.O., a lot of people were saying, well, you know, I've heard that Google, that Apple's going to be announcing their own, like uh, their, their own AI system that's four times as good uh, as Google's and it's got their, uh, their own home system that's even eight times better than this. And if then if they don't do that, then people who are not good writers have, wow, Apple failed to ship the ever the, the device that everybody thought that they were going to do. So uh, it's not as though it's not as though there tends to be a, a, an attempt to control. But if we're we're all talking to everybody at the same time, and if there's an opportunity to quietly say. Uh, you, you were thinking about sitting this one out. You may want to actually pay the thousand or fifteen hundred bucks to come out to see this one, or to, to indicate that things are happening, but they're just going to be typical WWDC stuff without actually coming up and saying it. I do think that Apple sometimes tries to manage that. I've, I've got, I've had conversations in the past that were kind of in that kind of tone where I thought, just that's, that's an interesting conversation that I just had, kind of out of the blue, but okay. Is, yeah, and for is me, there it's a risk, though, of, uh, uh, I mean, it, it, I'll tell you what, I, not having a new Mac Pro, you keep saying Mac Pro, and I know you mean MacBook Pro, but but the Mac Pro is also neglected. Isn't there a risk people are going to start saying Apple doesn't, like somebody in our chat room, Apple doesn't care about OS X and Macintosh anymore? They've been saying that for years, though. I mean, with the new MacBook, with the new Mac Pro redesign, with the Final Cut Pro redesign, with a lot of the things that they've been doing with the positioning of Mac, uh, OS X server, they've been a, a long hitting theme that Apple doesn't care about pros, that they care more about empowering mainstream users than they do about power users. I think the balance with WWDC, though, is expectational debt. Because if we, if everyone shows up expecting new MacBook Pros, new Mac Bros, new 5K displays, uh, and, and literally everybody is expecting that, and then none of it happens, regardless of what they show for iOS 10 or OS 10, 10.12, or why. Watch OS or TVOS. The whole story afterwards will be oh, no new Mac Pros, no new MacBook Pros, no new Apple displays. Mm -hmm. So the expectational debt is tremendous, and managing that is tough. Uh, and I try before every show to sort of help set expectations because the last thing I want is to be there covering a keynote and every second comment is oh no this Apple's doomed, oh no that this is terrible. <laughs> uh, and a lot of it, even beyond you know what Apple may or may not do with with the biz pubs, there's just a lot that's logical that you can sort of look at and and see you know what is a technology, what would it require to achieve. The this rumor and does that seem like something they could do this year or is that something like uh, oh let's just have an OLED display well touch ID sorry um, 3D touch works based on LED so in order to have uh, an OLED display they'd have to re-engineer the way that works is that a short-term project long-term project you know how does that sort of logically fit in then I think we sort of help people set their expectations and maybe get a little bit of disappointment out of the way early on yeah, yeah. but I do think that that is that can be a point of concern there are people like us who are real dyed in the wool Apple people that uh, I can't, uh, I can hardly imagine a scenario that would get me to, if I've got $2,000 to spend on a notebook, to not spend it on a new MacBook. Uh, but there are people that look. My MacBook is to, my, my MacBook is, to, is from 2012. I keep waiting for this. Uh, I, 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 it's it's starting to die right now. I need a new one, but it hasn't really received a significant update in the last year. And I'm hoping that if if WWC comes out and they show up something really really awesome, then that's great. I'll earmark 2,000 bucks uh, for the new MacBook when it gets released in in August. But if they keep saying if they keep delaying, uh, excuse me, not delaying it, but if they if another year goes by without a MacBook. It causes it might cause some of these people to look around and saying, "Well, what else is out there?" Because I can't deal with having a notebook that has no no L key functioning, and I don't want to spend a thousand bucks to uh, to to have that, that keyboard replaced. 
it might cause them to look around and suddenly see that, again, someone who is not necessarily a, a Mac fan, to see that, well, actually Windows 10 is actually pretty good, or hey, look, these Chromebooks are now a lot better than I thought they were, and maybe I don't actually need this anymore. Or uh, or an iPad Pro, I think, will actually do me just fine. Instead of spending 2,000 bucks on a Mac on a MacBook, maybe I'll spend just 1,000 bucks plus 200 bucks worth of accessories. So I wonder how, if, if it's, I wonder if it's possible that Apple loses a lot of opportunities by not having uh, metronome like like uh, updates to their hardware, the the expectation that if there is a you will we will not be selling uh, MacBooks or, or Mac Minis that have last year last year's generation processor in it because we're going to make sure that if you buy you're you're going to get fresh produce uh, no matter what time of year you 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 come into the market. I think that's true. I think also that they there are sometimes expectations and they make all these decisions. They have these same conversations and they'll say, do we want to try the more conservative or the more aggressive prototype? Can we get it to market? And they might feel that they can and then something happens and it's delayed uh, internally. Like it doesn't meet whatever internal uh, checkpoint they have for it and they're forced to reevaluate those plans. Or they could say, uh, it's just not going to be ready on time. Put the Skylake chip in the existing model and mm -hmm. we'll just ship it and then we'll try again for next year or next well, time. I wouldn't the want them to do that, of days. course, but I would hope that they're spending some energy <laughs> on new hardware. Do you think we'll see it maybe, I mean, so the, the prime time to do it is uh, before back to school, right? Yeah. So, yeah, although I think for this, we're, we're looking at, you know, but, like they said, in the rumor Q4, which is, uh, they, they've already lost miss the it. window. They if missed they, it. If they, yeah, they, they would want to announce by April or May so that people can get their, pur so that institutions can get the purchase orders in. And also they want to make sure that things are kind of on the shelf uh, for people who are actually going back to school in September and October. And that's probably a MacBook Air mix anyway for them, the back to school. I mean, the Mac Pro is long in the tooth. I don't know. I think there are people who are going to just get tired of waiting. I really, I did. I bought a Linux machine. Yeah. Um, it was full. And it this has so a, you know, this has a Skylake in it. Uh, this small company yeah. can do it. This has a, a, a NVIDIA GeForce 980M in it. A small yeah. company could do it. The other, see, the other problem is that uh, a lot of it, it used to be that if you wanted to do high end Photoshop, if you wanted to do high end photo editing, high end video, high end pre press, pre press, you really were stuck with the Mac. But now, pretty much every standard app and every standard platform is multi platform. So there could be, you, you don't want to give a consumer the ability to sort of break out of that habit to so suddenly start to look around and think, well, what if for the first time in 12 years I bought a, a Windows machine yeah. instead of a Mac to, to run this on? And then they realize that, well, actually, Actually, that's actually part of my existing Adobe license that I can get Windows versions right. of these apps. Right. I've talked to, I've, I've got, I've got a friend who, a couple of friends who've already uh, trans uh, moved their shops over to uh, uh, Windows hardware, and they said it was, it took them about two days to get everything done and everything works perfectly. Why am I waiting an extra year for hardware that may or may not ship, and it's going to cost me an extra eight, eight hundred or nine hundred dollars? So it's, you, you always want to make sure that it's, it's, it's the oldest maximum of, of marketing when someone has money in their hand and they're thrusting it at you, you take money out of that hand and put one of your products back into that hand and say goodbye to them. You don't simply say, nope, <laughs> we don't want your money right now. Come back in a year because that money may be already be spent someplace yeah, else. I, I do think that Apple, in an ideal world, Apple would have had you know all that stuff ready for WWDC. But I also think they've been saying this before that for them, uh, power, uh, like the ability to process more isn't the constraining factor anymore. That people pretty much think their computers are big and are good enough. And to Andy's point before, absolutely there are people at the bleeding edge that need the more power the fastest possible. But for a lot of people that shift to power efficiency and maybe looking at that they've decided that Skylake is a commodity now. Everyone's going to be shipping chips with Skylake in order for them to have a, a reason. And they're very clear about this. Like the MacBook has to have a reason to exist. It has to be more than just a more powerful processor at this point. And it has to be a feature. And maybe that feature is like the OLED screen. Or maybe that feature is the Touch ID sensor. Or maybe that feature is something else. But in order for them to make what they believe is a worthwhile next generation computer, it's not just a chipset anymore. And, you know, they thought that maybe that would be ready earlier. And it's not. But it's still higher up on their list than than just yeah. making a faster horse. Well, I have to do have to mostly, acknowledge mostly, that the, the I, I, I just want to say that mostly I was talking about uh, not the MacBook Pro but the Mac Pro. Mac Pro, sure. Uh, those those really uh, super and uh, that's uh, that's a really good point on, on MacBooks. Also, remember that when I when I toasted my uh, my my two year old uh, MacBook uh, in a hotel room uh, in November, I just simply went ac walked across the parking lot and <laughs> to an Apple store, bought a new MacBook and brought it back in. Uh, that I didn't necessarily care about what was in it or what it did because I need to have a working MacBook. So it's possible. We, we're, it's, it's, we're part of the fun of what we do for a living is that we get to talk about this in a way more 
detailed way that uh, maybe consumers actually react. Uh, but uh, the, if there's something that I that I if there's a, a behavior that I wish that Apple would change, it's that. Uh, fixating on doing a revolution when really all we want is good all some people want is good value or just an incremental change uh, it's a lot more complicated than just simply putting a new uh, cpu in but i would hate to think that i'm uh, i would be waiting six months because apple wants to put an oled touchpad in there and i really don't care about an oled touchpad and, or uh, they want they want to make sure they're trying to get this new keyboard to work and i don't really i like the old keyboard you're basically making me wait eight months for something that i don't value it's possible, though. I mean, well, first of all, the the couple of year old Mac Pro or the couple of year old MacBook Pro is not out of date. That's very clear, right? And processors have been fast enough for a long time. You get a refresh every year from Apple, so you're probably right that real people would just see this as, hey, that's normal, that's economical. But it's not how Apple's done this. Apple has never eschewed an opportunity to sell new hardware, whether you need it or not. Let's face it. And uh, so I'm, I'm wondering if it, and this is the only reason I bring it up, if it shows, I mean, we're, look, this is what we do. We read tea leaves because we have so little information. We have to read tea leaves. But does it show a lack of interest in the market? Um, no. They're looking at the PC marketplace, which is dying. They're doing better than the PC marketplace. But maybe they think, look, we make so much money in mobile. What do we, we don't really have to worry so much about desktop. I don't think it's quite like that. I think that they're, they're they appreciate the fact that they're unique. That if they don't, that if people don't like the hardware that they're making, or they don't like the schedule that they're producing it at, or they don't like the price that they're going at, your alternative is to go switch to an entirely different platform and buy entirely new apps. And I don't. It would take a lot for someone to be so frustrated with any of those kind of intangible things to go through all that expense and all that trouble. So I, th I think they realize that there's a they have a larger cushion. Uh, as, uh, for pushing out these updates than uh, than a w they would if they were a, a Windows hardware developer. If they were a Windows hardware hardware maker, they would really ha they'd be competing against eight different companies. Uh, again, there's so many people lined up to get that two thousand dollars out of their customers' hands that uh, they would have no choice but to do things on other people's schedule. But and, and Apple still that outsells they, that industry. I mean, <laughs> totally. yeah, but and, but any I, individual I think, company I think, anyway. I, I think all I think all that means is that they are outselling. I don't think I don't know if that uh, if that has any other significance. Yeah. And also, also keep in, keep in mind that like Chromebooks are now outselling all Macs, which is right. Okay, it has something I mean, to do with the fact that it costs well, at least a quarter as much. But, right. Uh, there's those I numbers mean, could be tweaked. They also love the Mac. I mean, when the MacBook was introduced, there was people, and they tried to give it to customers first. There were people at the campus just desperate to get their hands on the MacBook because it's the Mac they wanted. And there's people desperate to get their hands on the new MacBook Pro because that's the MacBook Pro that they want. And I think we've seen this with, with iOS devices in the past where they've come in late, come in just at the line. We've had to wait till November or like October, November instead of getting them when they were first announced. And I think there is part of it where they are just racing at that finish line as fast as they can and sometimes they run out of time and they just can't make it by that launch window and then it goes it just gets shifted into the next one but it feels very much to me as a culture that is like we're going to get this as soon as we can if we if wwdc is one of those few things that we can't change if it was a normal event maybe they would have it in october instead of september but uh, wwdc is an absolute they don't control that schedule really do yeah, yeah that's set way in advance and yeah. if they just can't make it they're not going to show off a, a terrible version of it or a bad version or anything utterly anything different than a delightful version so if it has to wait until they can do a, an event specifically for it, I think that's just a hard choice they have to make. WWDC is Monday. Keynote is at 10 a.m. Pacific. That's 1 p.m. Eastern, 1700 UTC. We will go live with our coverage here. And Andy, I think you'll be joining us on the coverage, right? I will indeed. That's good. Renee, you'll be in the room. Yes, Trinity and I will be there. And Daniel Bader as well. So we'll have a good team there. Uh, and... Uh, I guess it's important to say uh, this is going to be f uh, really about developers and not about products. Yeah, I mean, I the OS so. is our products, and they have a lot of features that make the products more valuable. But I think that's absolutely right. It's the think about the software this year. Yeah. I do think that they have a lot of uh, uh, there are a lot of empty tiles on the board that they need to fill in for uh, for Apple Watch. Uh, so I'm hoping to see not just hey look we we're now allowing custom watch faces or now we've got the the now the digital stem it, you can roll it forwards at twice speed instead of half speed. I think that they need to uh, really fill in here is what we here is what you are meant to do with the watch. Here is new capability that has we've been watching how people have been using the the watch for the past year that has informed how we want the next version of watch OS to exist and it has informed how why we have added these new APIs and added these new uh, UI elements to it. 
but other than that, they, I think they really, ha it's just mostly going to be housekeeping. It's a very, very even keeled uh, sort of thing for them to do. Uh, the hard, if there is uh, fantastic hardware and fantastic new services to be had, I'm not, I haven't seen reliable information that it will be debuted at WWDC as opposed to a fall event. Although if you go to the uh, website and you look at the uh, seminar schedule, there are some cryptic entries they're Most so all, all of them in Swift words alone parenthesis cannot describe colon this one end parenthesis or top secrecy equals sworn to or keeping parenthesis quiet or kidding equals you gotta be and then core animation that's fine you can talk about quartz all you yeah want. Swift API design <laughs> guidelines that's public but splash zone seating come early. Hmm, what is that going to be? The so most interesting thing to me is that it's being held at the Bill Graham Center. And it, it could be that they booked that early enough that they thought there might be new Mac stuff that they wanted to show off. Because the last time they were at the Bill Graham Center, it's when they showed off the iPhone and Apple TV and um, the new iPad Pro. And they really, they built living rooms for the Apple TV and it took up a lot of space. Uh, and this year they're having the keynote and State of the Union, which is the internal, the more even more developer focused keynote and the Apple Design Awards all at the Bill Graham Center. And I don't know the, the center well enough to know whether that's a larger capacity to host more developers or whether they really thought there would be a big hands-on room or whether there actually will be a big hands-on room and we'll see stuff like HealthKit or HomeKit or, or, or something put on better display. But I do think that the venue itself is interesting it's it's really yeah. uh this is some of these mystery ones are really kind of intriguing i must say yeah. And there, there, and there are a lot of things that could go in there. Uh, that they, they, they're invested in Force Touch not just as a, as a trade name, but also as a way of expanding the, the whole experience. And the way of putting more feedback through even a Mac, uh, even a uh, MacBook trackpad, is something that they've been looking very, very closely at. If the rumors of having a, an OLED, an OLED uh, touch strip uh, uh, as part of a, the, the standard hardware specification is true, obviously that's something that's going to require a lot of support. And I bet they wouldn't do something as simple as. Here is here is step one: key map it to the function key you want it to work with. Step two: upload a bitmap that represents how you'd want it to to go. Uh, I'm sure that they would they they will have a, they would have a design language and also a UI language that uh, helps you to use that. So there's a lot of little uh, things that seem like little enhancements that would nonetheless require a lot uh, of stuff to go. Uh, I'm when when I say that I have heard nothing, that only means that I have heard nothing, and it's not like I hear about everything uh, before before it comes out in advance. Um, but I'm I'm not I'm not prepared to hear that. Uh, Siri is now going to be self-aware and will now be going out and doing, you know, toasting your bread and making your English muffin for you uh, every morning. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, these small things can add lots of little uh, little niceties to the day-to-day -day experience, but will require a lot of effort from developers in order to support. I should point out that if you double-click the uh, individual cryptic code, it does tell you what category it's in. So guess equals do not even try is a graphics and games category we bet you equals can't wait you know is uh is another uh app frameworks this one sealed under lock and key so you at least know what category we're going to get interesting stuff announced in so i guess yeah. that's so that you can go if, if you're interested in app development you're going to go to the app frameworks yeah. Right. Also, th think about the fact that in the past year, Apple has uh, released two brand new app platforms, one of which being uh, the Apple Watch, the other one being the new Apple TV. So it's all of the and it, history has shown that Apple tends to make something functional with the first version, particularly of the operating system. And then they tend to fill in things that people that people have said they should have done uh, from the start. Uh, and so I, we hopefully we'll see a lot more sophistication, for instance, with the Apple TV. I can't I can't shake my uh, my hopes that uh, Apple TV will be uh, less of a home media streaming device and more of a here is a powerful iOS computer that is always connected to the Internet and always running inside your house and all the different ways that you can take advantage of the fact of having a powerful iOS device that is always aware and always on. Uh, it shouldn't just be streaming uh, uh, episodes of Archer uh, on Netflix. It should be <laughs> as, 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 as holy and sacred a, as, as holy and sacred a, a task as that would be. All right. So, Renee, I should really be telling people in our promotional material for uh, our coverage on Monday, don't get excited. It's going to be boring. Oh, well, I don't well, think it's no. going to be boring. I, I think the boring. iOS, yeah, I think I think the stuff we see for software is good. there's going to be some really really interesting stuff there. I just wouldn't go. I wouldn't expect it, you big shiny boxes to come back no. on the show. And and no displays with GPS built in. No. No. Or GPS. <laughs> or GPS. <laughs> GPS. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. So if you go jogging with your 40 inch cinema display, it knows where it is. You can, where you you can leave your phone at home. All you need is your 40 inch uh, 5K cinema display. I do kind of grin every time I set up a new Mac and it says, do you want to turn on Find My Mac? And it's like, well, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But I always turn it on. I guess if somebody stole it, I... Uh, it's, it's right here in front of me. What do I need to find it for? <laughs> it's right what here. Me for? Some sort of stupid <laughs> person. It's right here. What about the rumor that there was going to be a big refresh of iTunes uh, announced at WWDC. Do you think that's the case or not? Uh, I don't think it's ready. I mean, I I just don't... I, I think that's just such a... I think we'll see music updated, and I think we'll see Apple Music and new stuff there. But I, iTunes itself... It, when we start seeing Apple weaning people off, I, you know, traditional iPods and syncing them over cable on Windows, yeah. I think we'll see a lot more advanced. Or, okay. or when we see... I, um, iTunes for iCloud, when you can start streaming all your movies and TV shows and music right off the web, I think that that'll be a big indicator that old iTunes is is not long for this But world. we will see new Apple Music stuff probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think they, we, I think they kind of have to talk. I think they I think they have to talk about it. Um they have <laughs> I mean they 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 have to talk about it. It's, it's I I think that's the one thing that I think would be <laughs> a lot of people are saying, what's that smell in the room that, that they're not mentioning? <laughs> it's, oh, it's iTunes, and they seem to be so ashamed they're not talking about it. Drake you, has you, to come yeah. out in Mia Culpa, the whole thing, oh, say man. sorry to the six, and then put out a new version. Well, we I, see I, uh, no, Jimmy he's, he's Iovine gonna, and Drake. And he's going he's, he's to come out in, like, coveralls and, like, a paintball mask and just stand <laughs> at one end of the Go stage. shoot me. <laughs> as, as, as two random developers get to, like, shoot one and one only paintball at him. And then DJ Khaled can show the new version, though. Oh, <laughs> DJ Khaled is showing people uh, the new version uh, in in commercials, right? Yeah, I, uh, I heard that might happen, but it, I I didn't know if it would actually be real or not, and it worked out not bad. Yeah, I actually haven't watched it. Maybe we can uh, queue it up and uh, take a look. Um, but it so does do we? I haven't seen the ads. Do do we see an, a different looking Apple Music, or is it hidden? Is it no? It's a, it's basically a Siri oh. ad. It's just showing Apple Music is one of the functions that Siri can oh, do. Oh, it's a Siri. They've ad. They've been doing a lot of. Uh, a lot of people just gave up on Siri. They tried it a few times and never went back. And a lot of the ads now are trying to get you to give Siri a second Explain chance. Explain it to me again. For Ray Liotta. for nine ninety nine. Who always looks month. like he's wearing eyeshadow today pick or eyeliner. Any song, and it's going to come up. Uh, on your phone. As long as it's what on is, Apple Music. Hey, there's hook thousands and thousands and thousands of songs. I promise there's you. There's no way. Challenge me. Do Minute by Minute by the Doobie Brothers. Oh, come Play on. Minute by Minute by the Doobie Brothers. Minute by Minute by the Doobie Brothers. Don't ever play yourself, Ray. I'm telling you. DJ Khalid, I'm no, telling you. you. Say to me? I don't want you to play yourself, Ray. Oh, don't mess with Ray. Doesn't he look like he's wearing eyeliner? <laughs> just messing with you, Khalid. He's just messing with you. Oh, just... Do you amuse me? It's like a little mini Sopranos episode there. Am I some sort of clown, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> no, Ray. You said that I was funny. How did you mean that? Are you musicking to me? Because I must be musicking to you. I don't want to be musicking to you. Are you musicking to me? <laughs> I wish Ray just whipped out a gun and shot him. <laughs> At least in the can't foot. Can't it on prime time. I guess you can't. That was a long ad. That can't be one that aired on broadcast. It must have had an edited version for broadcast. Yeah, it's interesting how they're doing so. Like for years, they just they totally eschewed celebrities uh, with anything to do with Apple advertising, and now it's it's almost all they do with Taylor Swift and with the uh, the ads they did for Apple TV. It's it's all celebrities all the time now. It's a very interesting yeah. change. I have to, I have to managed to features too. avoid the viral video of Siri. Saving the life of a baby. I suppose we should play it. I just, I don't, I feel like it's link bait. There's no, what does that mean? Siri saves the life of a baby by calling an ambulance. How would it know? That's a better ad if it's true. Can we play that? I just want to see what that is. I know. I, <laughs> I'm asking a lot. Hold on. We're, we're going to queue it up here. Were they getting a Manny Petty? Hey, I think they Siri, were. Can you play the ad? <laughs> can so. you play the video? <laughs> getting a Manny Petty. That got my attention. It was kind of an empty, you didn't, empty. How story. come you didn't save me, Siri? There's a link in chat. I made, I Velocity made that drunken phone call. I, I got, I'm gonna get my HDMI working, so that we don't have to do this. <laughs> I apologize, Carson. 
Uh, what happened to Mark Gurman? Did he leave 9 to 5 Mac? Yes. Here's Channel 7 News. I guess this is where we're going to see the baby in the ambulance. A can's mom was able to use the Siri function to call can's an ambulance mom is, for that's her baby so who stopped breathing. They say Karen's strangely. Happy and cans. healthy. One-year-old Gianna Gleason is lucky to be alive and playing with her big sister Sophie. In March, mum Stacy noticed on the baby monitor Gianna had turned blue. She'd stopped breathing. I picked her up. And sat down with her on the floor. And called and Siri. And as I checked her airways, I looked over and remembered my phone. In a panic, Stacy had dropped her iPhone, so she yelled at it. Hey, s call the ambulance. I like how they bleeped We've it. Beat Siri that. because there's a chance iPhones will respond in homes across the country. Might have given the precious moments to Stacy. Actually, that's to, pretty cool. To revive. Yep. That's pretty yeah, cool. Instead of fumbling to make a call, Stacy could concentrate. Instead of this, like ad copy. And Instead of fumbling to make a call. Way, and Gianna was breathing again. With husband Nick off and away on duty with the Navy, Stacy had right, well, preloaded enough. emergency we get the numbers. Idea. Yeah, you know, I, I hate to. Uh, I, 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 it's sometimes I feel like it's my job to be a little bit cynical in times like these, and saying, "What is there?" Is a story about how the time that Siri killed uh, killed my dog <laughs> because I'd seen the commercials about how you don't have to touch it; you can just simply yell out "Hey Shlomo." But I didn't have the right software update, or I had hardware yeah. that doesn't support that unless it's tethered. It's okay. That's that's yeah. nice, but it's neat though that it does. I didn't know this that you can make emergency calls. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't wait. It, it's it, it, it's implemented correctly. It doesn't like ask which which there are four ambulance services yeah, nearby. Right. It's like I don't care on ambulance service. What's the syntax? Should you say call an ambulance or should you say uh, call nine one? Well, in the U.S., you'd say maybe call nine one one. I you have to try this because it's, it's very. It, it depends on somebody thinking of that pattern. So, for example, I saw someone complaining that if they said. Uh, hey, comma, Siri, do I have a busy day tomorrow? It wouldn't say anything. But if you said, hey, Siri, is tomorrow busy, then it would say something. So a lot of it is still, it, it doesn't. Yeah, it you, does that's good. right. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's so pattern all, dependent still. That's why I'm these curious. All, these are all super subtle, subtle things. Just this, just about an hour ago, I wanted to be reminded. Uh, I was, I was doing email. I didn't want to lose track of time, and I had uh, Alexa uh, in 20 minutes. Please remind me to, you know, don't be fixated on what you're doing. Get ready for Mac break, and. I started off by, I used the syntax for setting an alarm, but I finished by using the syntax I would normally use for setting a timer, but it figured out correctly that, okay, whatever. He's just saying in 20 minutes, start making beeping noises. I can, I can handle that. Uh, and that actually did impress me because it would be the, I think just a generation ago, maybe just a year ago, most devices would say, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Uh, it's. I can't imagine how much work goes into, particularly a function such as an emergency call, figuring out, uh, figuring out how many ways can someone say, "I need an ambulance right now," or "Hey, sh hey, Shlomo, I'm hurt really bad," or "Hey, Shlomo, I need help," or yeah. all it's the like, different do things I need a jacket people might today. say. Lexicon. Yeah. So here's an article, thanks to the chat room. How to use this is from iPhone hacks. How to use Siri to call emergency services. Um, if you're in the U.S., you could say dial 911 or call 911 or phone 911. Uh, you can say call emergency services, call the cops or call the police. Uh, and if you're not in the U.S. and you say dial 911, it will try to figure out what the emergency number is in your location. I would. This is a touchy thing, and I'm actually glad Apple does this because there's also the risk of inadvertently calling 911, which would kind of not be too cool yeah you err on the side of life yeah but err on the side of life exactly uh by the way in this article it says please do not test out these commands needlessly and i would like yeah. to reiterate they'll work you don't have to t try it although you will have five seconds to cancel so but but probably best I'll, not to practice I'll, all these companies take this super seriously though i was uh, talking to uh uh, uh, the, one of the vice presidents in charge of, I think, Nokia's mapping service uh, at the time, and we were t we were talking about how you, it's not a, it, when there's a hot, when there's like an emergency room, it's not enough that to just verify that that is actually the address of the emergency room. They, in that case, they actually send people physically out to see on what That's street good. is the emergency room entrance, yeah. and is it a one way street because yeah. they want to make sure the people that don't uh, mess in with that, it. In that case, circling the block is, yeah. is no good. But uh, what so, a real lifesaver. You could, you know, of course, uh, in any phone, you know, use the GPS and the navigation commands to say, 
get me to the hospital. And that really yeah. is. Well, it's also, it's, it's also right. super important. I, I would love to see Siri and other services, uh, when it makes the call to have Siri actually be able to specify to the 911, 911 operator the actual location of the phone, because that's a yeah. constant problem. They can only, yeah. if, they, if the person is not able to give them a, a specific address, all they can do is figure out via a nearby cell tower where something might be. Uh, and because the 911 services cannot locate your actual cell phone, it can only uh, locate the car technology can only locate a, a landline. So, yeah. Although there are, and I have, and uh, 911 uh, in the United States, 911 uh, services are starting to upgrade. There are e911 automatic GPS mm -hmm. capabilities yeah. built into phones, and but the uh, not your local 911 has to uh, enable it, of course. And they have to have the right hardware. That's and, right. They have to have the capability. But in some r jurisdictions, it is. And that is really cool because even if you can't say anything, yep. they can see where the call came from. Uh, let's take a break. Come back with more. Andy Anako here from the Chicago Sun-Times, not Tronk. Uh, I'll just say that from now on. I'm sorry. That's mean. And nope. uh, but It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's about funny. Time, so not about the Sun-Times. It's not about the Sun-Times. Kind of funny. Uh, from iMore. Should we call it iMonk? No, no, but we can, but it's funny. From Montreal, uh, Montreal. imore.com, Renee Ritchie, we're talking Macintosh. More to come in just a second. Our show today brought to you by IT Pro TV. We, uh, we uh, kind of have a little bit of the same DNA, I think, with IT Pro TV. Tim and Don, were, the founders, were big fans of uh, Twit and of uh, the screensavers and of Tech TV before it. And they decided we ought to really create something similar that uh, makes it, um, you know, easy to get those IT certs, easy to get a job in IT, easy to get uh, better at your job if you're already in IT. And that's why IT Pro TV was born. High quality video tutorials to keep your IT skills current, of course, and to get you a step closer to getting the IT job you've wanted. A th more than a thousand hours of content now. And they add new courses all the time because... Like us, they're streaming live, about 50 hours a week. There's Tim, there's Don. They're streaming 50 hours a week. And so you can watch live. By the way, you can watch live with a free account. But uh, if you want on-demand and access to those thousands of courses, it's very affordable. They even now, and this is, this is the I think, the first IT video provider to do this, have courses on sale at Amazon Video Direct. That's that new service Amazon, Amazon just uh, launched. Of course, still, you know, you're probably going to want to subscribe uh, to have the monthly uh, full full access. But if you just want to get one or two or brush up skills in one area, IT Pro TV's content is now available for purchase on Amazon. I love that. Courses include Mac integration basics, Mac management basics, Apple certified support, professional Apple certified technical coordinator. Of course, MCSE and Cisco certs, even the certified ethical hacker certs, which I just think that's so cool. I'd like to be a certified ethical hacker. And man, what a great job, right? They just completed their CISA. That's a globally recognized certification in the field of audit and control and security of information systems. Brian O'Hara teaches that. He wrote the book uh, for Cybex. June courses include CCNA Security, Cisco, VCP6, that's VMware, and Adam Gordon's back to do their ninth version of their certified ethical hacker training. You also get, with your subscription, not just the videos, but transcripts of every video. You get the virtual machine labs, which means you can, with any HTML5 browser, including a Chromebook, set up, configure a Windows server, set up Windows clients. You can even take the exams before you take the exams with the Transcender Practice exams. Those by themselves are worth 109 bucks, but that's all part of your subscription. And here's a deal. If you're currently signed up for an enterprise account with an IT Pro TV competitor and... Uh, and your rates are going up. You know who I'm talking about, right? IT Pro TV will match your previous year's pricing. Not the new pricing, but last year's pricing of that account. So you and your team can learn at an affordable rate. Harvard's entire IT department is subscribing to IT Pro TV. So is MIT, UCSD, Stanford, many companies. Go to itpro.tv slash MacBreak and upgrade your brain with the most popular IT certs. Now, here's the deal. It's normally $57 a month, $570 a year. But when you use our offer code MACBREAK30, M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K-3-0, you can try it free for seven days and get 30% off forever for the life of your account. That means we're talking less than $40 a month, 
Or if you buy a year, which is nice because you get to download stuff, you can watch it everywhere, by the way. Uh, even Apple TV now and Roku. It's three ninety nine after the discount for an entire year. ITPro.tv slash MacBreak and use the code MacBreak30 to try it free for seven days and get 30% off. ITPro TV. A tip of the hat to Tim and Don who've helped an awful lot of our viewers get better jobs. I think that's a great thing. Andy, Leo, and you continuing taking a look. I guess we've really covered now uh, WWDC. There's not much more to say uh, about that. Oh, I asked about Mark Gurman. He's, where did he go? Did he go to Bloomberg? Yes, sir. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. That's a big, I think that's a big get for Bloomberg. Yeah, it looks like it's a really good relationship. They're gonna, he's going to get to do TV and cross technology, you know, cover Amazon and Google and Apple. Nice. And all the big players. Nice. And I'm sure he'll keep all his sources. And get new ones in the other companies. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Good for good for Mark. He's what, he's yep. only like twenty three or something. He's a young guy. He's ridiculously young. <laughs> and always, I still remember, and I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this, but I still remember when he didn't come to WWDC because he was busy getting his driver's license. Wow. Oh, so he might <laughs> even be younger. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Betas are out though for El Capi 10, uh, 10, 11, 6. Developer Beta two, uh, TV OS nine two two Beta two. Is there a Watch OS and I, I, iOS update? No. Just I think two. all of them were updated. Oh, all of them as usual. I, I, okay, that's what they do now, right? They roll them all out at once. Yeah, it's, it's just they're these are like they're doing much more aggressive betas. They didn't usually do all the the, the point point betas. They would do like point two, point three, and now they're doing like point one, point wow. uh, sorry nine point three point one, nine point three point two. Which I guess good, you know. I mean, it hasn't stopped all the issues with them, but it it, it sure can't help. No, but I, and I like it that they are these public betas. Yeah, right. Both. Yeah. So yeah. the developer beta usually comes out a day before the public beta now, which is pretty quick. Oh, watch OS 2.2.2. I like it when they do that because uh, that means everybody can bang on it. And the more people that bang on it, the more likely it's going to ship uh, without a showstopper as iOS 9.3.2 did. Yes. That's been fixed. Didn't yes. happen to me. Didn't happen to anybody I know. Must no, have been a me. very small percentage of uh, iPad Pro users yeah. who got bricked by that. But they've apparently fixed it. Now, what I don't understand is they didn't release a new an update. They did. I think it was a few days ago. Yeah, but it's not nine three two one. No, no, it's a, it's a better version of the original update. Okay. So most of us don't won't get that because ours is fine. Well, you or, updated already. So what they did is they pulled the update and then they pushed out a new one. And you can see. still go into iTunes and hit restore, and it'll pull out the new version for you. So people who hadn't updated will get the new yeah. one. Yeah. The rest of us and, won't. Oh, unless you force the update, correct? And if you have a if you have an affected iPad, that's what that's what you want to do. Right. Uh, oh, now, oh, if you got bricked, will it save it? I believe I saw a couple of people saying it came back oh, from the brick, which is very impressive. Back from the brick. Wow. That's like the Golden State Warriors. I didn't have, I didn't, I, it's one of the worst parts of this job is you want to get every bug so that you can help try to troubleshoot it. And I right. just couldn't get this one. Yeah, right. And I tried yeah. it. Must so. have been a very weird combination of circumstances, something like that. Yeah, but, you know, if, 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 it's, if it's one person, if that one person yeah. is you, that's a big enough bummer. It sort of underscores why I don't have auto updates turned on for Pretty much any device, no matter what the operating system. I like to, I like to, I like to make sure that if I've got a stable device uh, and I've got a big business trip coming up or a big deadline coming, that I have a stable device, I can keep it stable by not changing anything about it. It's a, it's a bummer when you find out that oh, I this is a brand new phone. I forgot that auto update was turned on, and now this is not working. Though I have to re, I have to recertify for for Dropbox, and <laughs> I don't have my phone with me, and now I'm kind of screwed. Okay. Normally, yeah, I, I don't try to. Go ahead. I was going to say, I try to do it immediately right away. So if there are any problems, I can tell other people and warn them. Right. So instead of having an extra device to put betas on, I put betas on my primary device oh. and then have an extra device to, to fall back on if anything goes tragically wrong. You're doing wrong. it backwards. You're doing oh, it wrong. That's the same yeah. reason like you do it, Leo. I think like, you know, it's, it's in service of, of oh, we have meters. To do it. And, yeah. That's right. No, no, I, I do that too. But I, I actually have a, a totally separate table that has a totally separate <laughs> iMac on it and a totally separate device. Because just to remind myself that this is the device that, that's automatically getting like brand new betas for the stuff that I count on every single day. It's, oh, I can't, I could never. Oh, it's by Miskyra. It's an island in the middle of the office. Does it have that scary uh, warning? What was it? Uh, I saw, oh, this is so weird. If, if the, for the uh, buried nuclear. F fissionable material. <laughs> Did you see that? Do you know no. what I'm talking about? I saw it on uh, Hacker News. Let me see if I can find it because it was a while ago. I should have. I should have bookmarked it. 
Warning, Kodak has something in the basement. Do not oh, no, it was, it was scarier than that. Because, of course, this is uh, this is material that will be uh, poison for 100,000 years. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'll be able to find it. It was kind of it was kind of creepy. Somebody had put it in the Wasn't that what happened? They found a nuke in the basement of the Kodak building? <laughs> I think that was, that was actually the story. Oh, uh, whoops. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I guess we forgot about that one. Uh it was for film exposure, we swear. <laughs> yeah, right. We're testing. <laughs> App, you know, App, Apple builds one of pretty much everything they could possibly <laughs> build just to see how it would work. You never know. There might, there might be like half pig, like half olive loaf creatures somewhere in some <laughs> cage in the new, new version it's of the Apple next to the mass campus. driver and the, and the proton yes. accelerator. It says, this place is not a place of honor. Let me, wait a minute. I know, that sounds strange. Do the voice, do the voice. <laughs> is, that, is that the Klingon iPhone? <laughs> this place is not a place of honor. Kapok. <laughs> Let me see if I can find the uh, the image. And the, and the reason they do that is not for us, but uh, for an archaeologist that might not really understand, here it is, that might not understand uh, what these symbols mean. This place is not a place of honor. No highly esteemed deed is commemorated here. Nothing valued is here. This place is a message and part of a system of messages. Pay attention to it. Sending this message was important to us. We considered ourselves to be a powerful culture. And then it says 700 meters down, nuclear material. And the idea, I guess, is to, is, I don't know why they did this. Well, the, the, there's a lot of people who actually think about this stuff. There is a, there sure, are like this is from San, Sandia National Labs. And it was a it was a report on expert judgment on markers to deter inadvertent human intrusion into the waste isolation pilot plant. They are actually thinking about what happens a thousand years from now because we yeah. have material that will be still dangerous five thousand years from now. You have to think about that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and also, I, I do think that there uh, there are a lot of people who fancy themselves urban explorers. Right. And you they need to if they they they're they're used to walking past signs that are that they've seen before. If they say someone actually took the time to write out a full paragraph, this must have be it important. Engraved in metal. Yeah. yeah I, I get I get terrified when I see these viral videos of uh, someone saw this. I saw this. There's this hatch uh, that I drive by every day and way to work and seem to have an old rusted lock. And I I had uh, there was a, a staircase and I could go down. Uh, actually took me a, a whole like fifteen minutes, fifteen to minutes or half an hour just to get. I, I think I'm, I'm 80 feet underground and now they're walking through tunnels, not understanding that there are gases that are accumulating and ground. Uh, and it's, yeah, there are reasons why they put a lock on it. And one is because there are people right. that will very much die. If they so do you, that. you have but, to think 10,000 years from now, uh, if it's an archaeologist, a spelunker, or, you know, just a, somebody wandering around that they might say, oh, this must be important because of these signs. Unless Apple's here, 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 experimental here. dematerializer <clears throat> finally yeah. starts working. Is there is there any chance that if you saw a pyramid, basically a, a structure that was built five uh, five thousand years ago, just nothing but huge massive blocks that took immense effort in order to build, right. that it can be seen from miles and miles away, and that really That's... you you seal dangerous things inside <laughs> levels and levels and levels of concrete, and a lot of these structures, as boring as they are, they kind of look interesting in their boringness. So yes, you can imagine five thousand years from now, somebody thinking that this must have been some sort of a temple, this must have been right. some sort of an important government building, and they would not put this much of a lock on the. Uh, it, may, it would not. They would not make it so difficult to get inside this thing if there were not something really, really important and valuable just on have the other side. Glowing skeletons out front. Just glowing <laughs> skeletons out front. That'll warn everybody. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know how don't I got. How did I get? How did I get distracted by that? I I can't remember. It was something you, you, we were talking you about. Had we're me talking on about Max or something. Yeah. <laughs> we were we were talking about something having to do with Apple. Um, Apple has a new patent. I don't normally cover patents, but I think this is a reasonable one for what that might be something they do since they own Beats water resistant speaker port and bone conduction earbuds. Uh. I think it'd be you would want. I mean, how the iPhone uh, 6s is surprisingly water resistant, even though they don't bill it as such. Yeah, it's gasketed and it's got sealed 
components on the board. So I, I don't think it hits P6, uh, IP6, but I think it's pretty they close. They just, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a lot of phones are like that, where they uh, the, the the certification process for these uh, for these uh, levels is really really difficult, and sometimes they, it's too much work to get that in line before a launch date. But nonetheless, you can have you can you can find a video of someone op leaving a, an iPhone six just underwater. And the screen still works just fine, and they pull it out 20 minutes later, and the video is still playing. Uh, or even like a, a, a Nexus phone, uh, they have their videos like that. And clearly, when you do the dis disassembly, they did not build this to not be uh, not work well uh, under hazardous situations. And I actually talked to a couple of engineers at uh, one company about this uh, off the record, and they were saying it really was that they we we priced out how much it's going to cost to actually get the cert certification, both in money and also in how much we, it would delay us to be able to uh, put that on the packaging. We decided that so long as people understand, so as long as people wa walk in the rain and their phone is fine, so long as people uh, 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 drop this in the tub and it turns out to be fine, that that will be all the advertising we need about this. Yeah. Better word of mouth than word of lawsuit. Yeah. And then, you know, for, for God's sakes, look at all the videos of, uh, no, I actually saw, I didn't click the link because I don't, I have, I have more better things to do with my time, but so was, <laughs> okay. What if we put the, literally, what if we put the iPhone six inside a pineapple and drop it off a hundred foot building? Will the pineapple protect the, like, okay. Well, that's <laughs> you have two iPhones. What's the highest floor you can drop them off? <laughs> yeah, and so, and so the, I think I think that the I, I wonder if these designers also know that at some point someone's going to do a video of we decided to bake this inside Jello and leave it there for two months and it still works and they'll get all the they'll get more hits and more information uh, from that than they will from a sticker on the side of a box <laughs> that be throwing away. Uh, Mary Meeker gave her uh, annual Internet Trends report. She's a uh, venture capitalist and a longtime analyst uh, of the technology scene. She's at KP uh, Kleiner Perkins Caulfield and Byers, KPBC, RCB. And uh, this is the chart that, uh, that uh, The Verge says sums up the entire history of iPhone versus Android. Now, I'm gonna have to, I think we're going to have to parse this a little bit because she's not famous for succinct charts it's well, the other thing is that it's always reported as ios versus android when it's really like iphone versus every every phone other that phone runs android. i think that's a fair way to say it right. yeah so on the uh, on the um, up and down axis the y-axis is global smartphone shipments in millions on the x-axis it's by year so you could see it's a market that since 2007 since apple introduced the iphone has grown staggeringly into the 1.5 billion range and what a duopoly i mean blackberry is gone palm is gone yeah, windows no they don't even show windows phone on ios there. is the uh, orange slice uh the light blue is android so the orange slice has increased year over year it's bigger than all of 2008 yeah. 2009 yeah maybe. <laughs> it's hefty but uh, of course, the light blue is is uh, significantly yeah. larger. But, but, but what would that what would that graph look like if it was money? <laughs> if it was money generated uh, yeah. per, per unit, well, that'd these be very all, different, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. These are these are all hauling devices. Uh, again, it's, it's the difference between here is one company building every single device that runs this operating system, and then the rest of the world essentially building every other phone for every other need. Uh, so if anybody is using this as a way of signaling that, oh goodness, look how look how look how bigger this bar is and this other bar is no that's but you want, you want the you want the money not the bar the line might be the more telling one for both android yep. and uh mm -hmm. and apple which is the line shows the year over year growth and you see it went ballistic in 2009 2010 yeah. huge growth year over year and it's been declining ever since 2010 and it's approaching zero at this point in other words we reached peak smartphone yeah. in 2010 and the martians aren't buying leo we've tried i mean it's just <laughs> once you greet every earthling it's just not a growth market yeah 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 uh, there was a, there, it reminds me of uh, an interview i read years ago with the ceo the then new ceo of coke uh talking about the problems uh, it, it, he, this wasn't the explicit conversation they were having but uh you realize that the conversation that they were having in this part of the interview was about the difficulty of is there anybody who does not know what Coke is? And is there anybody who's not left who is not buying Coke? And so he t tells us they're in China, but the, they're doing some global stuff. And so he points to this uh, this 
a woman who's selling like a thousand, a hundred year old eggs or a, a, from a cart on a street corner. And I think that, oh, isn't it nice? He's talking about tradition and marketing and say, well, I have to, we have to figure out how to get that woman to stop selling these traditional eggs they've been making for a thousand years and start selling Coke instead. And that's where you, that's where you get into this sort of stuff where that's a, it, it, of course that line was sharp because smartphones did not really exist uh, right. Multi-touch smartphones only started existing then. So anybody who had an interest in getting it, uh, it was people who were going to be buying them because they buy every new thing. And then the people, as their uh, as their feature phones start to die out, replace them with uh, with smartphones. Now they're going to have to figure out uh, once now that it is a really a, a truly a commodity item, how do you get people to switch and how do you make sure that you keep the customers that you already have? Uh, the other point uh, she makes here is that while um uh, unit shipments are declining for iPhone. The first year of decline this past year, 11% year over year. Uh, Android uh, shipments are increasing 7% up year over year. However, if you look at uh, dollar volume, yep. it's uh, kind of the opposite. <laughs> so, yeah, and there's very little. I mean, this has bothered me for years is the lack of sophistication in the smartphone market because many markets are already segmented where they try to tell you, you know, what what sort of what are premium cars going for? What are economy cars going for? What are trucks going for? What is a premium segment? And this just lumps all smartphones together. So it makes it hard to tell, you know, how much of this is China India? How much of this is sub $300 phones? How much is sub $600 phones? How much of this? Well, there's but just here's, no here's where it's germane is that that's that many people using that operating system and, uh, so if you're a developer, or if you're, you know, the app ecosystem, you're going to be paying attention to that. Absolutely. Kind of, right. but they didn't break no. it down by version either. And if, if yeah, you're exactly. using under iPhone 7 or under Android, you know, uh, whichever version you want to put the bar at, you know, right. that, is that the same target for developers? Maybe right. not. Right. Yeah. Remember that and with Android phones, uh, you can have a lot of success uh, against the iPhone because uh, there are people who cannot afford even like a three-year-old's third-hand iPhone, you ha really have to find a way to make a really inexpensive Android phone that's tailored specifically to that part of the world that will have specific needs uh, for both data bandwidth and how they get their news and information. Uh, and so you're talking a lot. You're, you're talking about uh, yes, the brand new version of the Samsung Galaxy, but you're also talking about something that's going to cost the equivalent of about one afternoon's uh, the the wages of like one of <laughs> one American in one afternoon uh, to, to actually produce. So that's why it seems it seems as though the, uh, when you talk about the Android market, there are at least 12 different platforms, 12 different uh, 12 different setups. Even when you're a developer, uh, a lot of these older, uh, simpler phones, they're still running Android 2. Point whatever. And that's as that's like running uh, Apple II DOS, really, uh, compared to uh, the, the modern version of Android. So it's 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 what very are developers hard to saying these days. Are they uh, still agree, you know agreeing with the common wisdom that Apple users spend more? Uh, you should do your iOS device f uh, phone uh, app well, Some first. don't care about money. I mean, it depends on. I think now it's more sophisticated. It, like they try to do both, and it depends on what you're targeting, and and you'll know what kind of user you want to target yeah. with that app, and then they'll make a judgment you know, call. We did have Mitch Wade on Triangulation uh, yesterday. He has a very expensive, relatively expensive, fifteen dollar to twenty dollar uh, birding app, and I I would have assumed if I just looking at it at that cost and that particular demographic that it should just kill on iOS, and in fact. He did ship it first for iOS, but he says actually the Android market is uh, is really uh, swamping the uh, Apple market. I believe that some things are underserved. Like Pocket Cast said that for a while that they found the premium podcast market was saturated on iOS, but completely yeah. underserved on Android. So it made a lot of sense for them to target Android instead of. Yeah. I hope I'm, I'm I'm quoting Russell. Well, it's just I guess there, it's complicated. Is the point? It's not yeah, obvious. Right. And for instance, there is, and Mitch did say this, an expectation on the Android side that everything should be free. Um, uh, you know that, that you know I Android users don't don't uh, even less than uh, iPhone users. Those aren't the like customers they want, stuff. though. On the other hand, the expectation on the Apple side is for in-app purchases, right? I think it's. I think the the, the data points out that almost nobody uh, wants to pay money for for phone apps uh, on on both sides. Of the, I think both you're sides right. Of the fence. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, it's it really. I think that uh, an underserved point is that uh, I. I am in the habit uh, as part of my really as part of my job is that I'm the I'm the guy on the subway who is trying to see what color your headphones are and trying to see through the case of your phone to see what kind of phone you're using. Uh, and when you start paying attention to what kind of devices people are using uh, in 2016, the iPhone is just another phone. Uh, it used to be the absolute uh, gorilla of, uh, of the smartphone market, but now there are 
about four or five different makes and models of phones that I expect to see in a public space. And the iPhone is simply one of those models. Uh, and so it shouldn't really frighten anybody or surprise anybody uh, that uh, numbers for purchases of, 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 uh, of Android phones and, uh, and Android software uh, is might be as profitable, if not more profitable, than what is on iOS. But it, it continues to be a problem that people just don't want to pay for software. There, I, I think he said, and I, I think this is correct, there are no in-app purchases on Android. Is that the case? Can you? I can't remember. Um, no, I think, I think. well, I don't know. He didn't want I, to I, do in-app purchases. I think, okay. I think there are. The, the, the difference is that with Android, you have alternatives to doing in-app purchases. You can actually, uh, usually my, my vector for buying Android software is downloading the free version and then getting so annoyed by the ads <laughs> that I'll go back on the Play Store and buy the ads, buy the ad free version. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, there's, 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 and because you can actually also return an app after within two hours, there literally there's a two hour window that if you say, okay, this app stinks, I don't want it anymore, they will actually refund your money. Uh, it's not as, as necessary to uh, hide features away uh, to, to to start getting stuff back. Uh, but uh, you can buy, of course. What am I thinking? You can yeah, because yeah, the EU purchases. is regulating in app purchases on both platforms. Oh, that's disclosures to kids. Yeah, right. Well, of course, and rightly so, I think. Yeah. Let's take a break. We'll come back with more. Renee Ritchie from iMore.com. Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun-Times. More Apple Talk still to come. Our show today brought to you by Wealthfront. If you're investing for the future, whether it's your retirement, your kid's college fund, buying a house, just a rainy day fund, you really have to think about where you're putting your money because, uh, you, don't, you know, it's hard to get pretty good returns these days. That's why I'm really excited about this solution, Wealthfront.com. Now, Wealthfront is not a traditional investment advisor. Traditional investment advisors charge you like 1, 2, 3% of what you have under management every year. And then, you know, they might do a checkup every month, sometimes every quarter, and, after, and that's it. Uh, that's an expensive uh, price to pay for very little service. Wealthfront's kind of the opposite. One quarter of 1%, and they're constantly monitoring your investments. That's because it's all in software. Software works cheap, but it works hard to do things like tax loss harvesting and diversifying and rebalancing constantly. It's not Now, we're not talking day trading software, but it's the same kind of technology applied to your long-term investments. This is based on Nobel Prize winning academic research and the best investment practices. They'll ask you a few questions, surprisingly a few questions, to get a sense of your risk tolerance, your time frame, and then they will put together... A plan for you. In fact, you can get that for free at wealthfront.com slash MacBreak right now. Find out what they would invest in based on what your unique needs are. They will also review your existing portfolio for free. So you can tell them about that and they'll let you know how diversified your investments are, what you're lo losing to fees, even those hidden fees, and how you can minimize taxes on that income. If you decide to invest, it starts as little as five hundred dollars. That's the minimum investment. Of course you could put a lot more in and many of our listeners have put a considerable amount in, but here's the nice thing. Your first fifteen thousand dollars, because you came in via wealthfront.com slash MacBreak, will be free forever. No, not one quarter of one percent, zero forever for fifteen thousand dollars. That's a nice way to start your nest egg. If you're just starting out in life, if you're young and you haven't been putting money aside, please do it. The better, the sooner you do it, the more you'll you'll have when you get to be my age. I wish I had. Uh, try it. Wealthfront.com slash MacBreak. Find out all about it. Read up on the investment advisors, the, the, the system they use. Get the sample portfolio. Have them check your portfolio. It is at least try a little investment just to see because I think you'll see it is the best way to invest for the long term. Wealthfront.com slash MacBreak. Tony Fidel is out at Nest. Tony uh, is, of course, the designer of the iPod. Not designer. The uh, <clears throat> uh, super the father. The father. Or something. They always put that up between Rubenstein and him. He, they got very tension. Yeah, it's hard to say exactly what Tony did, but he did some stuff. He was in charge of the iPod division, right? Something like that. Uh, iPod hardware or something. He, he did something. I don't know what he did. <laughs> but he's considered the father of the iPod. Before that, he was with General Magic. Uh, he uh, he left Apple to start Nest about eight years ago. Nest, of course, the smart thermostat company that's struggling a little bit these days and has been taking some heat from Alphabet, its parent company over at Google. 
he has left. Uh, yeah, he was in charge of the P1 phone project at Apple, and uh, what's his name? Scott Forrestal was in charge of the P2. First, and, the first iPhone. They, they, well, they didn't think that they would be able to get what we got as the iPhone out in anywhere approaching a reasonable amount of time, and then it turned out they did it much faster than they expected. So the P1, which is sort of the iPod-based phone, never went anywhere. The, the Linux E sort of based phone. So yeah. uh, they, he, he did not win any of those arguments, neither did John Rubenstein. So they went to other pastures. Yeah. At least it's doing better than the BlackBerry. Yeah. <laughs> That's not but actually not true, technically. <laughs> people were hypercritical of him at Nest because one of the things about people at Apple is that they ship. And yet at Nest, the, the story kept being that Nest just wasn't shipping. They weren't putting new products out and they're having trouble with some of the features that they were adding. You saw that you know, uh, headline and, that they were, they were, that Google gave them unlimited essentially unlimited funds to do to work on something new and they never and they all they did was a smoke detector that flopped yeah and another difficulty was that most of their a lot of them they, they acquired drop uh, drop cam and a, a lot great of their product products. exactly and so one of the things that he was being faulted for was that the success of his division was largely due to the fact they bought a successful product that had been uh, developed outside of uh, outside of nest uh, it definitely they, they definitely had huge plans for nest as being their home uh, home equipment uh, home hardware uh, division, but uh, you could already see sort of the cracks in the wall as a lot of products came out that you would expect to be under uh, uh, under a Nest brand, uh, but decided to be a Google brand or uh, under a Nexus brand instead. Uh, and it and, and the, the, there was a lot of dissent. And when you when there's a lot of uh, uh, people who are if, when when an executive is getting that kind of bad press and that kind of bad attention. And his bosses are not saying boo in defense of him. Yeah. You know that they're just they're to, they've they've already picked a date and they've already agreed that we will let you leave with lots of money and your dignity. Uh, <laughs> and but we are <laughs> you you <laughs> have have. Have you spent enough time with your with your spouse and your family? Your <laughs> family must spend more time with your money. Exactly. So that, that, that's what his announcement basically said. That I, I, I've, I'm going to be moving more into entrepreneurship and a lot of other projects I'd like to do. Uh, and this, and it's not a laughing matter. I mean, I couldn't. Uh, and a few of us could uh, do anything with one fraction of the success that Tony Fidel has done. But uh, unfortunately, it just turned out. It looks like it was a, a management mismatch uh, between uh, uh, his his uh, his style and the culture of the company. Because uh, I have not. I've never heard positive things about working uh, working at nest uh, from anybody it's always been uh, the, the same the, the best stories i've heard about working at nest were equal to the worst stories about uh, working at apple with uh, and with apple there's always that person saying well i'm, I'm going to tough it out for another year because i really want to see this product get out and i really want to be part of this uh, but yes this 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 job is crushing my soul and i want to have some soul left that could be put together back at the year but i'm definitely going to wait until the next version of watch os is shipped before i do that it may be but revisionist but the story he's put out the story that oh no i decided to do this long before you know the problems uh, surfaced between me and uh, google and I wrestled with my conscience for six months before I. I mean, finally... he can't be happy either. I mean, like as, as much as people in the company aren't might not be happy, he can't be happy there right. either. And it's interesting right. that uh, there was a dynamic at Apple when all these guys were working under Steve Jobs and and making these products that you can't just pick you know, pluck an individual out and say, oh, you know, he was instrumental in iPod, but iPod was Steve Jobs on down. It was an entire group of people and pulling any of them out and saying you need to reproduce that success is is probably not the best recipe for it. All right, let's talk about Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> He's on his sleeping bag at the end of the line, Leo. He is making your car. Man, yeah, wasn't that interesting? He's actually, they said, on the sh on the floor there of the Tesla plant, sometimes sleeping there to keep an eye on things. Does he jump in with a wrench? What is he doing? I don't you know. Mad? Oh, I'm trying to assemble his car, and Elon is just staring at me. <laughs> with those eyes. Uh fascinating interview at the recode conference uh you know he wants to evacuate a planet he's not sure exists i mean that yeah. was that was the most interesting thing for me yeah yeah that's a good way to put it so that's two different sections but you, <laughs> you've brought them together he says uh yes we're going to all go to mars because uh, we want to evacuate the earth and uh and then of course the one we uh, spent some time talking about on sunday he says the chances that we are in base reality that that is real reality are about one in billions very, very unlikely. He thinks we're all living in a simulation of some kind. Uh, and that makes a fairly good case. This is one of those things college 
students <laughs> stay up all night debating and have for years. Depending on what they've been imbibing, it's yes. much longer than in that. He, in Colorado. He, in <laughs> Col he even said, he said, my brother and I used to go back and forth on this so much to the point that we actually had to ban it from the hot tub conversation. Hot tub banned. <laughs> Uh, but he also talked a little bit about Apple. He says he's not worried about Google. Um, Google's done a great job at showing the potential of autonomous transport, but they're not a car company, so they'd potentially license to other companies. I wouldn't say they're a competitor. Then uh, Walter Kara asked, what about Apple? And yeah, Elon said, that'll be more direct. He said they may be a little late to the table, though. I think there'll be a volume there'll be volume production no sooner than 2020. That's not that far off. That's four years off. But then he said, in a rhetorical question, is that too late? Um, he also said uh, Apple's great, great. Uh, I think it's great they're doing this, and I hope it works out. <laughs> he seems kind of conflicted about how he feels about Apple. Yeah, because the other uh, he said before, Apple's the graveyard for uh, for defecting Tesla employees. It's almost like a borderline thing. I hate you. Don't leave me. Yeah, I think that yeah. uh, not a, not a few of us have that kind of a love hate <laughs> attitude towards Apple. To be honest with you, uh, you could say the same of me. I love you. Don't leave me. <laughs> I hate you. Don't leave me. Uh, what did you? What anything more to say about that? I mean. Uh, it's a. It, I. I think that it's kind of spot on. When you talk to Google about uh, their interest in cars, they don't seem to be terribly interested in manufacturing something they're going to sell to people. Uh, they do see. They do seem to be thinking a lot bigger than that. Uh, the problem with, uh, however, talking about what Google is doing, uh, excuse me, what Apple is doing, is that nobody knows what Apple is doing. We're assuming that they're aiming themselves towards building a production car that will then be sold to people, or at, at minimum, be sold in fleets to government and to uh, and to uh, universities and stuff like that. But we don't know exactly what their what their target is. Tesla has been focused on being a battery company and a car company, uh, and they've been shipping, 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 and they've been shipping, <laughs> they've been shipping new cars that have some problems with them but they, they've they been shipping and iterating and shipping and shipping uh so it'll be I, i'm i'm still fascinated by the prospect of uh is apple capable of doing a real car uh as opposed to we're going to do something that is a good platform we're going to ship this and see what happens uh they're 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 they, they do seem like the sort of company that would wait until hold off until 2027 because <laughs> they don't really like those door handles or do we need door handles to get inside cars Touch ID just on have, the door handles yeah. <laughs> yeah and i think that's all true you know apple famously you know they waited until markets were mature it's the tim cook doctrine as horace did you know called it where they want to make sure that they look at a market and decide that they can provide compelling value and not just make an apple version of an existing product and if they can do that if they can own the technology end to end and they can provide a significant contribution then they move forward and they do that with an incredibly few products and that's that whole mantra a thousand no's to every yes you have to build prototype experiment think about a thousand products and say no to them until you get to the point where you're going to say yes to a couple of them and at the same time everyone's saying apple needs something new they need a car they need vr they need something we're also saying apple's doing too much they need to slow down they need to focus on a couple of products so uh, i think that they'll they'll continue to do that and the car is just such a big endeavor that it behooves them if they're even thinking about it considering it to get involved years and years in advance well, you have I, to. I don't, know, I don't know if that's necessarily true anymore, though. We only have one. Uh, we only have one data point, unfortunately, of what uh, Apple products are under Tim's uh, Tim Cook's leadership, and that's the Apple Watch. And that is nothing if not just one of those. There's nothing really innovative about it. The, the, the manufacturing is innovative. The styling is innovative. But they there is really nothing you can say about the Apple Watch. You can't say about pretty much any other smartwatch that's out there. Uh, at least nothing that's uh, nothing that's positive. So I wonder if they would be willing to simply if if part of the new uh, if the, if the new uh, character of Apple is that uh, is to elevate the importance of styling uh, t in the uh, in in the equation, say that we would uh, we would uh, the the old fashioned Apple would be we're not going to make a car if we, if we want to do a transportation product, uh, we're going to do something that's absolutely brand new that no one else can do based on the information that we can collect off of how people have been reacting to other products. Maybe the new version is that we think that people are underserved by their current cars. It's not as pleasant uh, a place to be during the 90 minutes a day they spend inside there. They feel as though that that uh, 
car design has been stagnant for the past 15 or 20 years and we we can give design the, the kick in the pants and and manufacturing uh, the kick the kick in the pants that's been sorely needed famously during uh was it uh, the, when the Apple uh, when during the the uh, the, the halo of uh, coverage of the Apple Watch? Uh, there was a really deep uh, interview with uh, with uh, uh, with Johnny Ive and the and the rest of the design team talking about how much they laugh at <laughs> how how much they laugh about current car design, how much they they make fun of cars that they walk past in the parking lot. So I could imagine them saying that the way that we're going to add value and innovate is going to be in design, if not in uh, the way that this concept is being articulated to the consumer. Yeah, I think the watch was different, but I think that also explains a lot about it. Like with the Purple Project, they hated their phones and they thought they could make yeah. a much better phone. Uh, they didn't hate their watches, but there was a point when they did the Gizmo Project where they thought that health was super important. That the best way to start addressing the health market, which, you know, fitness and health and medicine, you needed the device to actually be on you. They needed sensors that could actually touch your body and do readings. And the best form for that to take was a watch. And the digital watch, the computer on your wrist, wasn't as evolved as the phone or the tablet was at the time. So it wasn't as much ability to look back and see the watches, they kind of developed it concurrently. So I don't think it's so much that it doesn't add to the existing watches, it's that they were developing it at the same time as things like Android Wear. And their take on it was, you know, sort of focused on health, but then it got a little bit confusing with the digital touch and some of the other features that they added. Yeah. I still I still think that I really wish that uh, uh, I really wish that they had focused on making a totally health focused wearable. Uh, something that is really more like a wearable band than like a watch. I think they could have done something amazing that people would. You, you, it's, Apple is in the wonderful position of tricking people into wanting to uh, use a health a device uh, by making a making a, a stylish band that not, doesn't necessarily cost five hundred or ten thousand dollars, but it's so cool the way that it works and it integrates with your phone so well. And the data collects can paint such a wonderful picture when it's put into the cloud and they do some number crunching on it. Uh, it's it, it, I think they could have had a truly exceptional fitness band instead of a uh, okay they have a, they have a watch. Yeah, I think we'll see. I think Jeff love, Williams' love, love organization is is doing a lot with medical stuff and they're just avoiding the consumer products or avoiding things that would take lengthy FDA cycles to approve, but they're probably experimenting with other stuff that might be more medical and require a, you know, yeah, deeper, the, longer product lines. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean this to be a tear on uh, uh, on Apple Watch. Merely, merely saying that I, uh, whereas maybe in the pre-Apple Watch days, I would have felt as though we're not going to ship something. We're not going to ship something for the sake of shipping it. We're going to make sure that we're doing something totally new and totally bold. I don't think that that's uh, that the Apple Watch makes me think that maybe that's not as important a factor uh, as it once was, because, again, they could have held off on the Apple Watch or they could have shipped something different from what they did. Even Android Wear is a significant uh, has a significant point of view that's unique to Android Wear, whereas, again, Apple Watch to me just is no point of view whatsoever. It's just a it's just a, a gadget watch with fitness features on it. They it's, said no to Munster's television, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be very hard to find a follow up to the iPhone. I mean, that no company has oh, ever I'm, really I'm, had yeah. that kind of yeah. incredible. And, and, and I think they're smart enough not to even try. I think they're just trying to do whatever they think is the next whatever is the next project that they think is important. Uh, I, I don't think uh, you you can't be cynical and think that uh, they're so full of themselves that uh, they feel as though they're going to change the world with uh, with. Every uh, that they, they feel as though that they have to one up themselves uh, with with every th single thing they do. Again, one of the greatest powers of Apple is that they have the ability to determine their own destiny. So I think I do think that the only things they put in the product line are things that actually interest them, that they're actually fascinated about, that really gets them excited about getting this to the ship date. Uh, and so that's why they don't have a million different things in the product line. It, and also, I don't think they're trying to. If someone wants to say, "Oh, you, uh, how, how come you're how come you're not working? You don't seem to be uh, shipping the next iPhone," because we're shipping tens of millions of the current iPhone at high markup to people all over the world who are camping out to get them, uh, and <laughs> we're going to make the next thing that follows that uh, when we are ready to create it and ship it. The fact that we have our rent paid until. 3148 AD means that we don't really have to stress out about uh, having about the next news cycle and the next announcement. What is the connection between Apple and Muhammad Ali and why is he on Apple's front page? I mean, uh, no disrespect for Muhammad Ali. I mean, uh, absolutely, uh, you know, a significant he was part passing. of the Think Different campaign. Yeah. So if you're in the Think Different campaign, you can expect to be on the front page of Apple. When you pass. Well, I think if you if you were part of the Think Different campaign and you had a, a tie to Apple and, and they believe that you did so a historic contribution. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, also they, they they they've done for for other people that they just simply really really like. I think so. it feels very personal. You know, I mean, yeah. how would we feel though um, if Coles did it or Kroger's or, I mean, apples are feeling either. Huh? It's still it's appropriate, I, I guess. I I don't know. It just feels a little. Um, Apple's different. They're a different kind of company, and I guess that uh, they they almost are like people that we know. And so, as one might tweet, you know, so sorry to see Muhammad Ali's passing, and that's fine. Um, when Apple does it, it's different from some other company doing. Well, you can tell. I mean, there are certain people uh, who just affect our culture to a degree that uh, my Twitter feed lit up when Muhammad Ali passed away. Sure, it did it when Nelson Mandela. Passed. They didn't do it for Prince. My Twitter feed lit up for Prince too. That no, that's that's entirely true. I, I just think that there's certain there's certain focuses that Apple has, and some and part of that is civil rights, and part of that is the that that whole think different campaign. That sort of it, it creates a confluence where they make the decision on that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think it was a legitimate, sincere tribute to. Oh no, that I'm not knocking. It. Oh no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. puzzled because, well, a the com confluence mm -hmm. of, uh, I mean, it's this is a commercial enterprise, and what they put on their front page and take over their front page like this with this, there's, there's something to be said there, and their choice of who they're going to do that for is interesting as well. It's it's so rare that they don't really have to worry about it. Google, I think they're kind of regretting. <laughs> if there's one thing they regret about the doodles is that if there is something yeah. that it, like uh, they I don't I don't think they changed their doodle for Memorial Day uh, this this year, which causes everybody to wonder how come you put this other person this other thing as a Google and let me let me go through the history of everything you've done. Oh, well, you did a Google for that. That's not as important as Memorial Day. And you did a you did an international uh, international thing for this thing that only affects people in Eastern Europe. Why did you and sometimes you really have to explain that there is no master plan. There is no there is no ranking board that says that the birth of Jesus Christ is the most important thing and that will always supersede everything else. And then the death of Jesus Christ will also be the number two on that. And you now that now we're gonna have a now we're gonna have a a, 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 a a sports event. Now where does that rank on this? Is that more important than the death of a civil rights leader, or is it less important than the than the in Invention of something that that we think is really really important. So sometimes it really is. Uh, these are companies that are run by people who do things because it occurs to them and because they think it's a good idea. And once you start to say that, why did you do this instead of that? Why did you honor Muhammad Ali but not Richard Feynman? Why did you do? Well, this? I would like, almost say just don't honor anybody. I mean, you're 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 a business. Well, that's, that's that's no fun either. <laughs> Steve know? Jobs, Bill Campbell. I mean, you can personally. I think Tim Cook should, uh, you know, do whatever he wants in his Twitter feed. But uh, it just seems a little odd. It's a, it's a bad, I think it's a bad it's a bad call to say that we're not going to honor anybody because we don't want to offend people by leaving anybody out. I think that's a bad call too. It's a, some people are going to be upset. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that the people who are up, who are going to get upset are wrong to be upset, but that's their I'm personal issue. I'm not upset. Issue. I just, it's no, 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 I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm, I mean, they use Wayne about, Gretzky I'm so sure, much. They I'm, I'm sure it, it, when Bob Dylan passes they'll put Bob Dylan on there, right? Because he was in the... So, I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense to think different people. Who, by the oh, way, were they involuntarily conscripted into that? Or I I presume Apple licensed all those images. Oh, yeah. I think they would have to. Yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, I don't think... You know, nobody asked Albert Einstein because he was long gone. I just, I'm, I'm sure... I I'm, to, yeah. I'm sure you can't put uh, a, 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 a someone's face on a billboard. No, you can't. Yes. <laughs> without uh, that, that with your logo on it, and that not be constituted an advertisement. So I, I'm sure they did. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, he's there. The greatest. He's there. He's, he's yeah. I mean, I think you could argue that. No, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> and some he's punching you wh right there. Leo. I know it's an interesting picture, one, by the am way. Am I the one who's 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 uh, who's surprised that his knuckles don't look like beat up steel <laughs> hammers that have been beating <laughs> iron for for? Well, he does wear years. gloves. Remember that I mean, is the poster I mean, from my, Think Different. You know, that, that's that's, that that's true, but still. Oh, like, is this from Think Different? Is yeah. that the thing? Okay, the so they have the right poster, to yeah. that image. It actually, it's one of the nice things is you. It's it's it, you never saw this image in all of the tributes to Ali. This was an image that Apple owned, so you didn't see the other images. Yeah. You saw a lot of the other images, but this is a this is a nice one. Well, there's no concern. I'm just uh, no, no. But it's, a, it's it's an interesting conversation to have. Once you there there are problems that you have once you're once you achieve a certain size and reach that you did not have when you were a smaller company, where the only people who know about you and who are looking at your website are people who love you. Right. And now that you're <laughs> right. 
Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that anybody who has gone from having 500 Twitter followers to having 10,000 Twitter followers or, God forbid, 100,000 Twitter followers knows what I'm talking about. Suddenly, it's not just people who love you who are reading your tweets or reading your Insta looking at your Instagram feeds. It's just normal people. And if you think about how one out of every 10,000 people statistically might be just a total irrational hate bag, well, congratulations, 10 of your followers are totally irrational hate bags. So that's going to factor into you're, yeah, you're not like, going to let you not going to let yourself it, not say something because it, uh, because of those people. Is it bad that Amazon didn't honor Muhammad Ali? No, no, I don't. I, 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 and I just feel like when you see. OK, so I just it, I don't know. It's I, don't know. I mean, if I'd seen a big picture of Muhammad, Ali, I guess I wouldn't I wouldn't be offended if Amazon did it. Um. It's Didn't not offensive not? exactly. It's just it seems well, like you're using something for marketing, I guess. Well, it's all, well it's, they do that it's with also, record sales, right? They plaster that up and then put yeah, on they're their selling album records. But yeah. I understand that. Yeah, and also and also they don't. Ha Apple has sort of a, a, a front. Apple has a front page. Apple has a lobby, so to speak, on their site. Yeah. Amazon. It's very has different, the front isn't page it? Of their store. I guess yeah. that's the. I guess that's my real point. Is Apple is such a different company that it can do things like that, and it doesn't s seem it's odd. The world's biggest small company. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, Honestly, can you think of another company where if uh, – does anybody in this conversation or pretty much anybody who's listening to this doubt that if Tim Cook wanted to – suddenly decided that I we want to make a sensor-equipped basketball <laughs> that, and, if, and if he decided that that's what Apple wanted to do, that they would not start making it or at least they would not start building it to see how much it would cost to, uh, to do it uh, as opposed to other companies where I don't know what division would start to grab it. And then I don't know what I, I don't know how many people would be fighting each other to make sure that the the project uh, project senso senso ball uh, does not get resources and manpower excuse me and, and worker power uh, from other divisions. It's uh, this is this is still like Renee said the biggest small company in the world. You can have one absolutely crazy. I've just had wisdom teeth pulled out, and unfortunately, I had my phone with me while I was coming out of the anesthesia. And three weeks later, I don't know why I'm in a I'm in a conference room explaining how the how the the, the duck that has a Wi-Fi transporter a transponder on its bill is now being pitched to me as something they've actually started to build. Uh, it's because uh, I, I think that Apple would be doing crazy things if they wanted. To I don't know. Things. You know, I I think they must have some corporate some more traditional corporate governance. I think if uh, you're right, Steve Jobs had said I want to do a sensor equipped basketball, the board would have gone his way. But I think Tim Cook was, has to answer I mean, to the board. And I think if he's going to, if they're going to do something like that, he's going to go to the board with it. And the board could tell him no. Even with Steve, I mean, they pushed back on it. There, there were a couple of really well, good they stories. Fired I, have him another, once. <laughs> I have another, uh, there's another episode of Debug coming out with Don Melton and, and Ganatra, and they share a ton of really great stories. And one of them involved Tony Fidel, where even though he was working technically on a competing phone with them, yeah, they said he still shared invaluable information on how to successfully make a small electronic device, things that would have taken them years of hard earned experience and inc was an incredible benefit to what became the iPhone project. And in other companies, you know, it, someone that radically opposed to your agenda probably wouldn't have shared of that kind of stuff. And the other one was our early NFC talks where they were thinking about putting an NFC radio in there. And Scott Forstall and, and Oppenheimer at the time, it was the CFO, were saying there's this is a chipset, not a feature set. So even though some people wanted it, there was a lot of pushback. And there are famous stories about, you know, Steve Jobs refusing to put iTunes on Windows and Eddie Q and Phil Schiller saying we're doing it. And he's like, well, fine, screw you guys. God help you if you fail. Uh, but he was still smart enough to let them go ahead. He, he was smart enough to get people who were smart enough to do what he didn't want sometimes as well. I think that's one of the interesting parts of this culture is like, yeah, you know, they'll try the, the edition watch. It may, maybe not work. Maybe they'll push back. There's a lot of projects they didn't ship that maybe some people in the company really, really wanted them to. But it, it is a group of individuals who can push each other around in those uh, situations. You know, there are those who say that uh, Apple should have had uh, Kimbo Slice on the front page. Ah, uh, uh, Kimbo. Ah, uh, Kimbo. We hardly knew ye. In my case, I didn't know him at all. <laughs> um, the, speaking of Think Different, the uh, creative director for the Think Different campaign uh, published an article in uh, The Guardian, Ken Segal, saying, Has Apple lost its way? Steve Jobs' love of simplicity is gone. Eh. Uh, but he didn't say that. He actually put up an article saying that was not his title. Oh. That his title was a question, and the, the the actual content does not match the title that the Guardian put Damn on. Damn those headline writers! Fooled, so he said, fooled me yeah, again. He, he wanted to discuss uh, the issue, and he has 
points on both sides of it, but they he put does really say the natives are getting restless, and I think that that if if there were a subtext to this whole show, that might be it. <laughs> the natives are getting restless. Tim Cook has a different style. Uh, he knows how to make Apple run efficiently. He recognizes he doesn't have Steve's many talents, so he relies on the expertise of others where he is less experienced, like product design and marketing. And that's where things get a little more complicated. Well, so did Steve when it came to op, you know operations and, and a whole bunch. That's why you hire Tim Cook. I mean, yeah. they're, they're smart enough to know that the, the big people they need in those companies. He says, Apple now sells three different iPhones, four different iPads, three different MacBooks. The Apple Watch comes in a seemingly infinite combination of sizes and bands, which Renee Ritchie <laughs> loves. Yeah. The I mean, the Performa that's... came in a huge amount. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Apple but, universe but is exploding with complexity, or is it? That, that's the real headline. Is yeah. it? iPod socks. Steve Jobs shipped iPod socks. Right. I mean, let's <laughs> right. He says, "Are they really that complicated? The uh, company's entire selection of products can easily fit on an average size table." That's true. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I think you're right. I think this headline is not fair to what he's really saying. He corrected it on his blog. I think I stuck the link in next to the yes, other you one. did. Yeah. Me, uh, it's it's important to remember that there's a long, long tradition of editors writing headlines for stuff that other people yeah. wrote. Uh, the, the number, there are a number of times of the Sun-Times where I have uh, had a very polite email saying, <laughs> yeah, that's the, that you really need to change the headline. I'll give them three alternatives saying because that's absolutely not the point of this piece. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm, this is not a takedown of this company. This is me saying that I like three parts of this. I didn't like two parts of it. So, yeah. Yeah, he, he actually, he says it really, not only the headline, but the article itself uh, misrepresented, contradicted, he says, his point of view for clickbait purposes. Sorry, Guardian. Bad Guardian. Bad Guardian. Uh, so if you want to read the article, don't read the, uh, don't read the Guardian version. And don't read the, <laughs> don't read the versions of the versions, the, the third party versions offered by CNET and others. Read Ken Segal's version on his yeah. own blog observe ken Segal's observatory which is at k-e-n-s-e-g-a-l-l.com that really there really is a source of concern for me because you see a lot of people a lot of other sites that don't have something to run for 2 p.m and so they yeah. will essentially rewrite something that they saw on another site and make it really different they will quote it but and then mention with the sources but they will make it really hard for you to get back to that original source so it really does become like a like a game of telephone where you start off by saying that I think I could I could foresee a, here's the situation which I could foresee myself uh, not using uh, switching from a, a Mac to a Windows machine, and then by the time the third source writes their piece, it's like Andy not going out since he's through with the Mac. Like no, I didn't not say anything Bazooka's like that. Mac live on television. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't say that. Let's take a break. Come back with your picks. I have a pick too. Awesome. But first, let's talk books and audio books from Audible. Dot. Com. I was just looking, and they we've been uh, doing advertisements for Audible.com since 2000, I think it was 2008, seven or eight years. I've been an Audible customer for 16 years, uh, and I think everybody agrees at this point, including all of our hosts, this is the best way to listen to books, and I would submit the best way to read books because I don't read very much anymore because I've got Audible. And certainly when a new book comes out, first place I go is audible.com and see if they've got the audio version. Nowadays, they almost always do because uh, this is one of the exciting things about uh, audio books is that publishers have finally realized that people want audio books. And so Audible has every almost every title when it comes out. Oh, somebody was just telling me he's listening to Stephen Levy's classic Hackers, which is available on Audible, Heroes of the Computer Revolution. If you've not read this, you've got to read this. This is a classic book. Was it you? I think it was you, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce Chesim, our engineering director. He says he loves it. And I tell you, I've read this several times. Stephen's a great friend, and I think this is a wonderful book. But there's so many good books. How about this one from Richard Feynman, The Pleasure of Finding Things Out, The Best Short Works of Richard Feynman. What a great book. The only thing missing, it should be in his unique kind yeah. of <laughs> accent. He had such a strong, uh, what is it? I guess it was kind of a New England accent. No, no, it was a very Brooklyn accent. Brooklyn, was, that's uh, what it was. Yeah. It could, he could have been Archie Bunker. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. 
I have some of his lectures, uh, of course, on audio, and it's wonderful. Yeah. Love Richard Feynman. Uh, they're actually quite. If you're if you're into physics, there's quite a bit of Feynman uh, on Audible, including "Surely You're Joking," and this is probably the best thing you could listen to. And it's Feynman himself. They have all of the Feynman lectures, the original audio of these. Bill Gates was reading the what do they call them? The Red Book, the 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 text versions of these. Mm -hmm. Um, this, if you want to really, now it's not for lay, it's ostensibly for lay people. It's not, uh, this is, yeah. these are his lectures at Caltech. These are not for, <laughs> these are not for lay people by any stretch of the imagination. Listen to a little Richard Feynman though. I mean, it's great to own this just to have it. His memo, his memoirs oh, are I different. I can't play though. it. That's a, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't even guess as to the number of people who have been, had their minds completely bent into a completely different but wonderful shape by being a teenager and listening to, uh, and, and what, and reading or listening to, uh, surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman. Yeah. That yeah. Uh, I was, I was breaking into post office boxes almost immediately <laughs> so after, awesome. after, after reading that book. And so it really awesome. does change your, it really does change your whole attitude about who you are, yeah. what your responsibilities are in life to yourself and to the rest of the world. And yeah, it give was, it to a kid. It, it, it bent my, my brain in a very positive way. So we're going to get you your uh, first uh, book free. Uh, if you go to audible.com slash Mac break, you'll be signing up for the gold account. Uh, that means you get a book a month or a credit for a book a month. Most books are a credit. 99.5% of all the books are accredited. Plus, you'll also get the Daily Digest, the New York Times, uh, or the Wall Street Journal. And, um, you know, in the first month, you'll pay nothing. If you decide to cancel in that first 30 days, it's fine. Thank you. Goodbye. But you get to keep the book, which is nice. However, I, I don't think you're going to cancel. What are you listening to? I'm looking for a new book, uh, Andy, what do you well, listen to? Well, it was, it was an automatic purchase. Neil Gaiman has a brand new book out. Oh, you're uh, right. Automatic. It's, yeah, exactly. It's uh, I, click, I just clicked away from it for a second. It's uh, the view from the cheap seats, selected nonfiction. It's a collection, uh -huh. uh, fifteen hours and twenty nine minutes. It is like a collection of all these little nonfiction pieces that he wrote, like uh, magazine articles, introductions to books. Uh, he has, for instance, the the really lovely introduction that he wrote for uh, a biography of uh, Douglas Adams, published after his death. Uh, that's just full of just really nice personal stories about when he was working on his own biography of Douglas Adams, uh, but working with Douglas Adams and having a daily uh, access to him and being a, in his office. Uh, and uh, it's a it's uh, Neil Gaiman's writing again. It's 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 always an automatic, particularly in Audible, because he reads his own book and he is a monster. Oh, he is a monster a storyteller. Yeah, uh, and it's also uh, the sort of audio book I really really like to have uh, in the collection because these are all individual short pieces. Uh, for so you, they'll be there. There are pieces that are long enough for vacuuming the vacuuming the living room. There are pieces that are long enough for doing the dishes. There are pieces that are long enough for oiling the chain on my bicycle. Uh, so you can start something and then say I'm going to continue to work until we get to the end of this chapter this the end of this entire uh, piece and then you start uh, fresh for the next day trying to listen to american gods uh, on auto on audiobook i recommend it highly but you will be in the world of oh, american so gods good. for a good <sighs> week and maybe you want to make sure that you pick a week where you can afford to be in that world your head in that world for an entire week this is stuff where you can really just dip in and out of it really really easily yeah. and this about 15 hours worth of material here that's a it's a good I, when, I, when i when i recommend free books to take i'm looking for maybe don't get the 90 minute fresh air episode try to get try to get for something that will that's true take you that's true full meal to yeah get through. yeah Never where he narrates that. That's really awesome. And uh, and Nancy Boys uh, was one of my favorites. There, are, I think there's a couple of American Gods. There's a dramatization as well as yep. a red one. And uh, that's one of the things Audible does really well is the uh, the dramatizations. I still have Trigger Warning, which was his last book, and I haven't listened to that yet. So I've got I've got some gaming to do. <laughs> I'll tell you. Here's your uh, chance. Your book is first book is free. Audible. dot com slash Mac break. Try it today. I know you're going to love it. Time for our picks of the week. Let's start with you, Renee Ritchie. So I got such great feedback from picking the AeroPress uh, a couple weeks ago. People <laughs> either already had it or they went out and bought it and loved it. But I also got feedback from people who don't like coffee and wanted to know what I recommended for tea. So I put it in the show notes. It, it's a, I, I forget what the exact term is, but this one's from David's Tea, but a lot of people make it. And basically you put your loose tea in, you add your hot water, and then you put the cup underneath it and gravity releases it and it fills the cup underneath it with the tea after it has steeped. 
You do have to make sure you take it off in a timely fashion because if you have too much water in there, it will overflow your tea. But if you don't, it is a great way. I was always sort of trying to figure out the best way to make tea. I know some people have tea machines. Some people um, use teapots. I have a bunch of Chinese teapots that I brought back from Guangzhou that I really like. But it, it just it gets this was just so easy and so fast and so quick to clean. And the nice thing about David's tea is that they make incredible loose teas. They have all sorts of tisans, like the herbal teas. This is a green tea with uh, roasted rice in it, a Japanese green tea with roasted rice, which has got a really great mm, flavor. I love that, yeah. There, I got a Magic Dragon, which is a fruit cut. They have, and they have, if you look at their teas, they have actual like bits of mango or bits of, or mm. star anise in it. It's it's really, it's high-end tea, but it's, it's like the, the Tonks or Blue Bottle equivalent of teas. Uh, and I've been buying three or four cans of it a month. I sort of try to rotate and get new ones all the time. Uh, and it, it really is great. They do ship in the U.S. Again, it's not super inexpensive. Uh, but if you know someone who really, really loves tea and they have sample packets and they have a whole bunch of different kinds uh, of infusers and just from the green teas to the herbals to uh, I tried one the other day called Countess of Seville, which was a green tea with bergamot uh, and just really, really, really good stuff. Oh, so range is, that you can get 18 ounces or 36 ounces. You can get family. You can go to family size if <laughs> wow, you want. Wow, yeah. that's a lot it's, of tea. <laughs> uh, embarrassingly, I saw this for the first time when I was at a Japanese restaurant, uh, and they put it down in front of me, and I wasn't sure how to use it. And I ended up putting it on top of what turned out to be the candle, not my teacup, <laughs> uh, and quickly overflowed it. Uh, so I learned my lesson, and I was hooked uh, ever since. Uh, this is cool. So it holds the tea while it's steeping. Yes. See, I don't like presses and other things that keep the tea leaves in yes. after it's steeping. So this is perfect. You Then you put it on the cup. It just comes out automatically. You're done. And so. if you enjoy Chinese teas a lot and you and you you're, you like the different levels of steeping, like the first steep, the second steep, the third steep, you can just fill it with hot water and go through all those processes. And it makes it's still super convenient. Wow. I guess I like that you can see how much is in there. Yeah. Now, how the do you, I guess you should use clear glassware if you're going to do these 36 ounce because you, <laughs> you'll you get need, the timing. Like, you you'll need timing to know when it's, when it's full. <laughs> yeah, okay. and you totally get the timing pretty quickly. I made a mistake the first time and after that I count like yeah. a few seconds, I pull it off and then I add it a little bit more if nice. I need to. Nice. I love this idea. This is brilliant. All right. It's David's Tea. And uh, it is it starts at $20. It's not that expensive. DavidsTea.com. Andy Anatko. Time for your pick of the week. Uh, mine is a, a solution to a problem that I've been trying to solve for a while. Uh, the, the Tony Awards is coming up on Sunday on CBS, and it's going to be a, it's going to be Hamilton tastic with a with a with a number from Hamilton. And it's going to be nothing but they're nominated nominated for fifteen awards. They're probably going to win twenty three. They should of them. just stay on the stage. Let's put it this way. Exactly. And uh, I used to have, I, I want to record it and I want to be able to save it. Uh, so, so it's part of my permanent video library. Unfortunately, the solution that I had for a couple of years, which was a, a piece of really antique software that would plug into the non, really non, not well publicized firewire port on the back of my, uh, my HD uh, cable tuner. I could just DVR stuff and then get the HD program just push play then push record on this piece of soft this piece of mac software i don't know whether uh, verizon pushed an update to the cable box that turned off the the firewire port or whether there was just a mac update that made this software not work anymore but it stopped working uh so i was thinking i was i thought that i would maybe buy spend a hundred bucks on like a new itv or something like that but then i found on on ebay excuse me on on amazon this incredibly sophisticated device called Digital Converter Box. Ah. Uh, ask, ask for it by name, <laughs> Digital Converter Box. Uh, it sounds dumb, but I'll, t I'll tell you, this is a $35 uh, digital TV tuner, like the kind that your like 90-year-old uh, grandmother has because she doesn't want to give up her 19-inch 19, 19 Magnavox TV, uh, and she wants to get uh, TV signals on it. It is, a TV t it is a digital TV tuner, but it also has a USB port. And if you have a USB storage device like a flash drive or even a hard drive, it will record programs onto that flash drive uh, and so you can set you can it has a the online programming guide that's free because it's just getting that off the air uh you can set up a record you can set up recurring recordings you can even just simply you're watching something and then just press the record button on the remote and we'll start recording uh to this device uh, it doesn't record in uh, like mp4 format it records in uh uh 
uh, a court, like the same uh, digital format that you get like off of a camcorder. So you do have to you do have to dump it into Handbrake in order to turn to an MP4. But you will wind up with a 1080 uh, HD HD full stereo full everything uh, version of this uh, program that you recorded uh, off of uh, off of the air. Uh, and so for 35 bucks, it's pretty damn good. I wish I I'm afraid it's it's still plugged into my system, so I can't I couldn't show it to you. But it's also it's not built like a piece of junk. It's a full metal full metal case it's got a led display uh, up at the front uh, it comes in now, i don't i don't want to be snarky uh, uh, but I, I have to point out that this is a 35 dollar oh, practically no name device and it comes with a, a remote what it comes with a full remote that has contoured stuff on the back that makes it really comfortable to hold and like buttons that are easy to find and easy to push and if you're holding it upside down it's really easy to feel that, oh, my goodness, I'm holding this upside down, unlike the remote of some other digital device uh, that I could mention. Uh, also, it comes with, like, all the cables you need, comes with HDMI cable, comes with uh, analog cable, unlike some $150 uh, TV devices that I've used. It comes with a full instruction booklet printed Again, unlike something else that I paid five times as much for, uh, but it's—I I was surprised. I really did. I bought it just hoping that I could record this one show and maybe get a column out of it. And if it does those two things, I'll get thirty-five bucks out of it. Uh, but I'm actually really, really pleased with it. I've got it set to record every single episode of the of the Colbert Show because sometimes there's a guest on that's so good you just want to have that uh, have that forever. Uh, it's also uh, I'm kind of looking into getting maybe a not too expensive uh, AV receiver. Uh, and so the ability to simply have TV tuning just as something I'm, I've got plugged into the receiver instead of plugging it in, instead of having the antenna plugged into the TV itself uh, is going to be a big asset. Uh, and as I keep moving further and further away from uh, uh, from conventional uh, cable and conventional TV, the prospect of now actually hooking up cable in a cable box into my living room is even it becomes more ridiculous with each passing week. Uh, but now I've got something that I can actually uh, be recording things digitally, the, the the few things that I watch that are on the air, and actually add them to my uh, to my library. And it's just thirty five stinking bucks. And if you really are that cool, that much of a Hamilton fan, uh, you can certainly order it today and uh, and have it delivered before Sunday, which is why I picked it uh, for this week. I I just wish that I had it a few weeks ago. Uh, PBS had uh, one of their great performances specials. It was uh, uh, from Lincoln Center, the Metropolitan Opera's production of the Pearl uh, the Pearl Divers, starring a name that you've heard me say before Diana Domino <laughs> and I, I came so close to spending a hundred dollars I've got I've got an ITV I just don't have a, a copy of the software and I would, would have cost me ninety dollars just to buy and download this software and I'm, I just kept telling myself, do I really want to spend $90? And then I'll have to have a Mac running all the time. I'll have to find a way to plug the antenna into it wherever, wherever I've got the, the Mac set up. This is actually much, much better because it's uh, it has antenna in and antenna out. So I can just simply put it between the antenna and my TV. And I just simply get all these extra features uh, for free uh, plus everything else. What but, a great idea. Yeah. Wow. Why? Uh, you know, there's all these things that, you know, the home run and all that that are so expensive and this just does seems like it would do everything you need by the way it's 40 dollars if you want all the fun things that andy was pointing out the antenna no, 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 and the it's, remote no 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 it's, it's, it's 35 dollars for the for oh, 40 dollars you didn't for get the $40, bundle for 40 dollars but the 40 dollars bundle includes an antenna that may or may not be great uh, so if <laughs> you need a, if you it. need an hd antenna then definitely Spend five maybe. bucks <laughs> it's a, it, maybe it'll be a good four point. bucks <laughs> I, you, you really have to you really have to place the antenna right. really carefully right. in order to make it work with no matter what kind you have uh but uh, it's it really came down to I, uh, for a hundred bucks, I would have had a solution that would have recorded stuff and automatically recorded as an MP4 and automatically put it on a server. And I could have an app, uh, the ITV app that will let me automatically stream it wherever I am. I didn't really need that. I just want to on certain for certain special occasions uh, and a couple of different shows, just record them and put them on a flash drive. And then at my leisure, convert them manually and manually put them on my server. And that's perfectly fine for me. So the key, yeah. of course, is good over the air signal. Uh, which unfortunately yeah, I, I, we don't have here. But if you've got that, then you can do everything else over the top with the internet, and you you don't need a cable subscription as long as you've got good over the air. Yeah, well, I see. The thing is, I found that uh, I do need a cable subscription for a couple of the shows that I don't want to have to wait for, like like Archer, uh, <laughs> like a couple. Of, but I, I found, uh, but I realized that uh, I also have a CBS. Uh, 
uh, subscription. Uh, the, I, right. I, I subscribe to the streaming streaming service because every show that I look, every uh, over the air broadcast show that I look forward to seeing is either on Fox or CBS and on no other channel. Uh, and uh, Bob's Burgers and The Simpsons and those are already on Hulu. And I get to capture all that other stuff, uh, get to watch all its, uh, the other stuff through the CBS app. Uh, but you'll be surprised at how much good stuff there is that's out there uh, over the air. Uh, and the ability to simply grab it and 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 keep it forever and ever. I still I still have like the last Letterman show and the first Colbert show still on my DVR, only because I can't delete it or let them be deleted until I figure out some way <laughs> of getting it off there. Right. Even if I have to just simply hook up a VCR to it right. and then burn it to a DVD or something. But this has uh, no copy protection, right? You just put it on a hard drive and now you've got a digital copy of the over the air nope. signal. Again, it's, it's, it's it, great. I, I don't believe, I don't believe it works with uh with clear qualm. So I don't believe you can No, actually, I'm sure it doesn't. I don't yeah. I, I don't believe you can uh, hook up your cable well, to it. Well, wait a minute. It says uh, not officially supported. Yeah, I I haven't I haven't tried it yet. Uh, it's possible <laughs> that it might work, but I haven't. A lot of times that. these Chinese uh boxes don't, you know, they're very clear. <laughs> oh no, we don't do any of that. And then surprisingly, they do. Yeah, I, sh I should maybe maybe I should look uh, for for a, a, a firmware update. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that has that has yeah. a bug in it. <laughs> we bought all of these uh, converters uh, that seem to somehow strip out copy protection. I don't know. Now you will have to climb the pole outside your house <laughs> <laughs> to get NBC. Right. <laughs> don't no, this don't is accidentally cool. put the red wire into the green spot, or else you'll get free Cinemax, and you don't want that. <laughs> you to wouldn't happen. want that. Hey, by the way, good good find. This is great. View TV. Uh, you know what? Go to Amazon and search for View TV AT two six three because you're never going to find it otherwise. And this this was they they had a different model that they, that's been out for a couple of years. This was this one was just updated and just released a couple of months ago. Uh, and it really looks at it. It's, a, it's actually a very, I, I love these little things where it's like 35 bucks, but it doesn't look like a cheap, it doesn't look or function like a cheap piece of junk. It actually looks like s people who cared about uh, having a good, exp creating a good experience yeah. uh, created this. Uh, and uh, as I as I said, I, I've, I, I recorded two hours of soap operas testing it out yesterday uh, and it worked perfectly fine. Yeah. I imagine they actually sell these somewhere as set top boxes. They, they have to be cheap. Cable companies wouldn't use them. It's maybe there, I mean, there are a lot of people who are uh, who are stuck with old TVs. Or right. it's, it's even good. Like there are a lot of people I'm, I'm sure who are listening who have like like the monitor I'm looking at right here. It is a really good HDMI monitor. It doesn't have a TV tuner in it, right. but maybe they want to have one of these. Uh, have, they have an old screen that's not doing anything, and they wouldn't mind having uh, a TV in the office. By the way, this is great. The, even the the notes say, you know, go to antennaweb.org, type in your zip code to find out if there are broadcast towers near you. Don't purchase this for cable use. It will only work with decrypted channel. I mean, th this is surprisingly clear and uh, straightforward. They yeah. really that, that, nice that, job. That is super. That is super important. I didn't start getting uh, good signals just historically until I finally bit the bullet and bought a about a 50 foot coax cable and just made a cable put the put the antenna in an actual window yeah. facing yeah. The, the the compass direction of the broadcast towers and an upstairs upstairs uh, level and then ran the cable down uh, to make it work before that i was not a happy camper because i'd gone from when they did the digital switch over i went from getting maybe 12 broadcast channels to getting two and i've already established that the only channels that i need are fox and cbs and those are the only those are the two of the channels that did not work so i could get the tonight show which i can't stand whatsoever but i couldn't get letterman which again <laughs> did not make me happy about the digital switch over uh, my pick of the week is something I discovered. By the way, thank you for your three, two, one block pick several uh, weeks ago. I now have my own, <laughs> yep, and I like it. And somebody in the chat room says there's a name for this TIN stuff. It's was it titanium nitride or something? There's it's uh, there's a name for it. The coating on this thing, but I like it. I said your <laughs> Wonder Twin powers click activate. <laughs> Uh, let yesterday Shape of a fractured skull. Uh, we did a whole uh, episode of iOS today on programming apps yes. for iOS, and there's some really good ones. Go ahead, Renee. Obviously, you this this clicked with you. Oh no! I mean, they're just it, like from Pythonista to editorial yep. to rumors of yep. Xcode perhaps coming at some point for yeah. iOS. It's just I mean, it's such I a fantastic area. I wouldn't want to be. A serious programmer using an iPad, but for education, for kids and for adults, it's great. And I found a program 
that actually I I can't wait to spend more time with myself. It's called Swifty. Uh, it's free with in-app purchases. Uh, if for two ninety nine you can get all fourteen chapters, it is an introduction to Swift. It's essentially a interactive introduction to Swift that is really really well done. So if you've been curious about Apple's new programming language and you kind of want to learn how to do it this is kind of like a book 200 tutorials that takes you from the very beginning uh you know variables and and control structures to to closures and to some serious stuff and uh i am totally impressed by this so uh it's a uh, it's on ios for a, the uh, iphone or uh, it's it's a universal or the uh, ipad and i'll show you how kind of how it works i'm at the very beginning of it um let's Let's do some. Oh, you can't. I have to put it right here. Okay. Uh, so it says with code, we can also do math. So var 1 equals 18. So we're. I'm at the very beginning. We're slowly working. Var result 1, 2. Okay. So let's do some math. Let's add. So it's. A, see, it's a pop-up. I'm going to add those together. I think that's the code we're going for. And now I'm going to run it. And it's going to. Nice. It print the result. And show me, and then some a little more text, and I can go on. I can do some more. Change the value of variables at any time. If we know the value of it, it's a good idea is you let instead. So my name is Swifty. I think we should say let because that makes it a constant, right? Let name equals Swifty, and there you go, and stuff like that. So this is really cool. Free to get this this far anyway. And then I think uh, later chapters are 99 cents, but it's $2.99 for the whole 14 chapter book i think absolutely uh absolutely well worth it if you've wanted to learn swift this is you know we talked about tinker and and lightbot and other programs that are kind of for kids and drag and drop and stuff like this but this is a little bit more sophisticated this is this is really uh some pretty cool stuff swifty a good way to learn a language i'd like to see it for more languages actually maybe they'll do the uh the little schemer in and this format would be pretty awesome we're out of time, but I think not really. There's never, there's always <laughs> more time, but why not wrap it up here? I think we've covered everything. Uh, Andy Anako is at the Chicago Sun Times. He also blogs at CWOB.com and does a lot of podcasts, material on uh, replay relay.tv. Uh, as a, uh, .fm, I mean, relay.fm. Relay.fm. Uh, relay.fm. As a matter of fact, we're doing our 50th uh, episode of uh, Material. We're doing our, our, our first live episode to celebrate. Oh, fun. Uh, and so if you follow me on Twitter, I'll tweet out the link to that. Go to uh, I'm at and go on Twitter. Oh, how cool. How cool is that? 8, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And of course, and that's today, right? Tonight. That's today. Yeah. And of course, Renee Ritchie, he does his own many shows uh, at imore.com. You can find uh, all of them there, including the debug a podcast uh and i look forward to that don melton interview that's cool thank you thank you renee thank you all for being here we do mac break weekly every tuesday 11 a.m pacific 2 p.m eastern it's 1800 utc please stop by and say hi you can watch us on the internet at uh, live.twit.tv or twit.tv slash live um, the reason both pages exist one they have different players the main player jw player that we use on our website is apparently blocked in some uh, businesses and government uh, uh, buildings. I think because it's used widely for porn. I'm not sure. That's my guess. Uh, so we have the Sublime Player at live.twit.tv. So <laughs> one of the others should probably work for you. Uh, there are also great apps on every platform written by our wonderful third-party developers. So just look for the Twit app and you can watch live or download episodes. You can also download episodes of this show at twit.tv slash mbw. doesn't matter to us. You know, you should get it wherever you get it. We just want you to listen. Make sure you tune in every week, and we thank our sponsors for paying it. So paying the paying in our way, so you don't have to. Uh, if you'd like to be in the studio, just email live at twit.tv. We'd love to have you in the studio. And there's a, just a few more days to get our fabulous T-shirt. You know, there's a fella in studio today uh, that's Renee Renee that's wearing your "I Stand with Apple" T-shirt. Come awesome. over here. Come over here. Show show Renee. I'm wearing my Twit t-shirt, so it's a confluence That's of awesome. It's perfect. It's perfect. What's your name? Josiah. Come behind me, Jeff. Okay. Yeah. He's visiting from Los Angeles. Look at this. That is a oh, good-looking t-shirt. You are a handsome man, sir. Yes. With good taste, <laughs> yeah. too. It's a, Thanks. It's a cool shirt. Thanks for wearing it. We really we, we stand with that. But that was on the encryption uh, yeah. issue. Yeah. 
Uh, our shirts are at Teespring. They're not quite as uh, political or interesting at teespring.com slash twit, but they do look good on our model, yeah. Renee Ritchie, here. There we go. Yeah, there's the, uh, that was one of the older ones. All of our shirts, the way we do this is they're, uh, they're uh, for limited time only. So this is the Twit World Tour T. Uh, only five days left as we record this to buy it. So um, we call it the World Tour T because on the back... It has all of the shows, including Mac Break Weekly, kind of listed like it's a, I don't know, like it's a concert tour. $20, we make them cheap. Teespring, T-E-E-S-P-R-I-N-G dot com slash twit. We also have a newsletter that's free to you. Comes out every Sunday, let you know what's coming up on the week ahead. And you can get that at twit.tv slash newsletter. And that's free, and we will not use your email address for anything else, I promise. We certainly certainly won't sell it or hand it over to any third parties you have my word thanks for being here but i'm sad to say time to go back to work because guess what break time is over